Okay, I think I got it. Hello? I hope this works. Can you all hear me? Am I live now? I think it should be good. It showed that my camera was black last time, so I restarted it, but I think we're good now, right? Hello? Testing. Check. Okay, 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 okay. I saw like two comments last time before I ended it, but um, uh, I hope uh, uh, everyone can find this. Okay, let me grab this link and share this with my server. Uh, let's see here my content hi everyone welcome we're gonna do some ear training today and some q a and just chilling and maybe some music making i've got some exciting things that i'm gonna share as well some cool new updates oh let me edit message on my discord server so everyone knows that we're now live stream starting now okay you were good before yeah my bad it looked glitchy on my end so when's the melee does do we want some melee i mean i'll play melee later uh, now I will say I haven't been I haven't had my gaming monitor set up. Hi everyone. It's so awesome link to discord Yeah, it's through my patreon, but I think I might be opening it soon But right now it's part of a, a patreon uh, tier, but I think I'll be changing that soon Also, I have some extremely exciting stuff that I'm going to talk about a lot this stream I am moving to automated booking, which is extremely exciting If anybody has tried to email me you probably haven't heard back that's because there are literally like six to seven to eight to nine thousand people sitting in my inbox and it's became such a graveyard that even with somebody working full-time trying to get through all of them it's impossible so uh we are finally moving to automated booking and that will go live this week it'll make it easier for people to enroll in classes it'll make it easier for people to do with private lessons and it's just it'll make it easier to collaborate with teachers so automated booking coming this week i'm so excited and i'll make sure to post all that information on youtube when i get it as a new learner how do i know if i've gone to the dreaded falsetto uh that's a good question now i just want to also say one thing real fast um falsetto is not super dreaded hello i like the udk i saw your comment on my music channel the other day okay falsetto is only bad because it can trick us into thinking we're reducing weight but I mean, it does reduce weight, but it will trick us into thinking that we're doing what we kind of want to be doing with our sound. Um, falsetto is not actually bad, though. In fact, I would encourage everyone to play around a lot with it. And it's extremely useful for singing and it's extremely useful for, you know, uh, general vocal gestures. Oh, thank you so much, Lena. It's awesome to see you here as well. I hope you've been well. So uh, how can you know if you've gone into falsetto? Well, that's a great question. How about we do some ear training okay so we'll get started with that heavy versus light versus falsetto let's take a listen okay so i've got this lovely stuff set up here to where we can do all kinds of ear training as a community together let's see and i just have to do this i just have to do this okay and then let me make this let me resize this so you can see me at the same time i don't really care for you all to watch this or anything but we're just going to pull it up just because that's what i'm currently doing stuff in so let's see uh so this will have us the ability to listen to falsetto and, and so on and so forth and whatnot so all right so here is the sound of a heavy voice versus a light voice versus a falsetto at the exact same pitch let me know if you all can hear this uh, uh, uh. So let's listen to the difference between the light and the falsetto. Now there's so many different ways that you can make falsetto sound. So it's not always gonna sound exactly like that hollowness right there, but it's definitely a, a really important thing that you have to be aware of. Um, hey, yo, that's cool. We'll do all kinds of voice training too. Uh, if this is my first stream of yours, do you have any videos you suggest watching before I watch the stream? Um, honestly, you should watch my beginner video. I spent a lot of time on that. Um, I spent a lot of time on that recently to try and make the best possible resource for people to get started with. And it seems like Jim Max has less total information in falsetto. Yes, you are absolutely correct. Falsetto is like hyper, hyper lightness. If we're thinking of it as just degrees of weight reduction, let me go ahead and record another one for you. I haven't warmed my voice up, so just so you know, um, so I'll be warming up as I go here, but let me go ahead and demonstrate again. Ah, uh, ah, uh. <laughs> hold on, let me go higher. I was trying to do that low. Ah, uh, ah, uh, So you can see here the let me let me center it now so this is the falsetto one <clears throat> and this is the light one 
Now, you don't have to get that like that sort of hollowing effect when you do falsetto. That's not like inherent in falsetto. That's just like what typically happens if people are, are doing the two different ones. So just be aware of that. Um, what do you use to visualize your voice? This is Voce Vista. And no, I don't really think it's super useful for beginners to use to help them visualize their voice. I think it requires a bit of um, interpretation, but it's definitely gives me something to show you all while I'm doing different stuff. So that's cool. I have a lot of mucus right now. <clears throat> Let's see. What's the most important thing? I mean, I think the most important thing in feminization is resonance. I think the most important thing for beginners to get right in the first place, though, is sound production. See, if you're coming into this and you already have the ability to smoothly produce and create sound, then you can just practice resonance and, and you'll be fine. But a lot of beginners, when they come into this, they don't have any musical background, they don't have any vocal background. And so it actually becomes a game of not just can you feminize your voice, but can you even produce sound in a clean and stable kind of way? And if you're very much a beginner, you should prioritize that, which you can see in my recent video. Um, but generally speaking, I, I still stand by my word that resonance is by far the most important thing. Um, particularly the way that resonance influences and impacts vocal weight, that's actually kind of more important than either individual parameter. Um, <clears throat> and you know, like I said, falsetto, um, like, okay, so like, um, like falsetto doesn't have to sound bad either. Like you can like, um, take a falsetto and you can like drive it a lot harder. Like this is like, um, this is like a falsetto sound right now and it's not really like that bad or whatever. So, um yeah, uh, you know, it's not like super bad to play with falsetto. In fact, I spend a lot of time singing in falsetto or a lot of time experimenting with falsetto. It's very useful. Uh, let's see, what's automated booking? Automated booking means I'll have a web, a page on my website or just a standalone website where you can go there, see exactly what services Trans Voice Lessons offers. You can book yourself, you can pay and everything's taken care of by itself. Um, and it'll allow us to launch webinars and group classes much easier as opposed to um, people having to, uh, you know, go through email. Like, cause like I said, I've got like anywhere between six to 9,000 emails in my graveyard right now. So it's kind of like, um, it's, it's too much. So automated booking will allow people to book themselves and to navigate a lot easier. And, you know, cause I don't just do private lessons. I also have a 12 week long group course that I've launched and I've been wanting to launch these, um, sort of low cost, I mean, really low cost uh, webinars, which will be open population group classes where basically it's like a 40 minute lecture demonstration and then a 20 minute Q and A. And, uh, those will be open population and those are going to be super affordable. So like, I mean, anywhere between like 20 to like $40, something that's like super, super, super accessible. Um, but the main thing is that it's open population and it allows people to, uh, to access the resources much easier. Uh, let's see here. Um, there's an app called voice tool. Okay. Um, to me, it seems like falsetto. I mean, falsetto just sounds Okay, here's the thing. You can make your falsetto sound more like full. You know what I mean? So it, falsetto's uh, kind of a weird thing because some people's their falsetto sound a lot more like their default qualities. Um, and like, like I'm um, like when I was like talking in like falsetto, like I, I think I could like go to a, um, I think I could go to a voice instructor and um, they, they might not catch the part. Ah, um, they might not catch that I'm in falsetto. It's, so you can actually manipulate your falsetto in such a way that people won't know you're in it. So, um, but generally the way that we see it manifest in voice training for people who are feminizing is something like this. They'll be like, ah, and then they'll like start talking like this. So that's really the really offensive thing you'll want to avoid. Ratio. Uh, I'm going to ratio you, Ruli. I want three people to post ratio in chat right now. You don't see the difference between resonance and vocal weight. Yeah, um, so I don't think you should try to see it. I think you should try to hear it. Um, I'll go ahead and do some demonstrations, though, here. So uh, here is a large vocal tract with low weight. Um, um, okay, so you can hear how this sounds very big, right? It's very big, but it's very light. Um, it's very puffy and fluffy. See, I just ratioed you, Ruli. Thank you. Uh, so we can see this. Um, this is a, a very large vocal tract with a very light sound. Now look, I'm going to keep the vocal tract large, um, but then I'm going to add the weight back in. So now you can hear like the difference between like size and weight. Um, so like the bigness of the sound is my size um, and the, uh, the weight is that. Now I'll do the opposite where I'm feminizing. Ah, part. So this is a very low weight and a very uh, small container. And so if I do the exact same thing and then I simply add weight, we can hear how now it becomes like almost too full. Um, 
what my colleague Clover has a really great way of describing this that I've been very fond of lately, uh, which is this idea of fullness, right? So if we can think of almost fullness as the relationship between weight and size. And if you have a very large size, but a very low weight, oh, I'm like this, it doesn't sound very full, right? So the bigger the container is, the more weight you need in order for it to sound full. Now, this is very important for feminization because if we're making the container smaller, that means we need less weight to make it sound full. And one of the big common mistakes that beginners do with voice is they're over full, right? So they'll, they'll be small, ah, uh, ah, uh, but then they'll kind of have like a little bit too much weight. And at that point, we're, we're actually getting too full of a sound because the container is so small and we're putting so much weight and, so and sound into it. And so, ah, uh, if I start like this and I'm kind of like too full, Ah, and then I lighten out, like now I sound adequately like full, right? It doesn't sound too full or not full enough. It just sounds clean. Um, so I really like that. Uh, I really like that, that analogy. That, that's something that Clover uh, brought to me. So very thankful for that. Let's see here. Um, one-on-one -on -one is best when you already have a voice and you want improvement for your information. Yeah, I'd agree with that, Lena. Um, I really think there's like no substitute for one-on-one. -on -one. I honestly, the group classes, we just went through our first phase of 12 week long group course and it was amazing. Everybody got progress. Everybody seemed to have a lot of positive things. We took all the feedback that we got from our guinea pig group and we're going to apply it and make the group classes even better for next time. And I was honestly very shocked to see the amount of improvement that people made in that time span. Um, but yeah, I do think like private lessons. Well, also, another thing is some people aren't like, for private lessons. There's some people who take private lessons and they're not really in the headspace to hold themselves accountable or to really go through it. And so they might not get as much progress. Whereas when you're in a group environment and you get to see other people struggle and other people succeed and people work through their issues and when conflict resolve, it kind of motivates you and, and gives you this energy to like keep going further with your own voice. And so I think that there's actually kind of like I think some people will excel most in group courses. I think some people will excel most in private lessons. And I think that once you get to a point though where you're like pretty good with your voice, but you wanna push it a little further, I don't think a group environment is necessarily the best for that. I think private lessons would be best for that because then you can really isolate a specific element about what's going on. But I was absolutely shocked. I think everybody was. It, that's what the main feedback we got from people was. They're like, I'm very surprised how much I actually liked the group aspect of it. So that was really cool and we, we've adjusted things to make it even better um, and we're about to start booking our next group class wave for mid-september is when we're going to launch um so very exciting stuff <clears throat> i have a lot of mucus right now but it's really not changing my sound that much i can feel it though uh, how will the web uh, webinars differ from anything covered in the videos? Um, it's going to be a lot more long form. It's going to be, there's going to be like an interactive Q&A portion afterwards. Um, it, it'll certainly be similar to videos, but a little less like, um, mm, a little less like, uh, how would you say like, a little less like hyper-focused, I guess. Um, they're going to be more built with a consistent through line. So someone could like hop into ones they're interested in or not hop into ones. It'll basically be with the automated booking. It'll be like a weekend thing. And if people see something they're interested in, they can opt into it. Like, let's say, let's say they have like two webinar credits or whatever. And they see like, oh, like, you know, advanced resonance stuff. If they're interested in that, they can join that webinar. And so it really differs from the videos because I get to be more, <clears throat> excuse me, mucus. I get to be more like, um, I get to focus on more elements, right? Like with my videos, I now I'm currently in this position where it's like, well, I have to create beginner resources and then slowly get advanced. But with these webinars, I can kind of, I can kind of do them however, and people can opt into what they're interested in or not. So I could teach things like even like music theory or um, accent modification or just different stuff that won't make it onto YouTube. Okay, let's see here. That's so awesome. I'll make sure to post all the automated booking stuff. Like booking has been a nightmare, even with my executive director doing the best she can and us trying to get through emails. It's a nightmare because especially now that we offer so many different services, trying to keep track of that through email is impossible. So really looking forward to that. Let's see here. So many lovely questions. It's honestly awesome to be here with you all. It's been a bit since I streamed. I don't like, I would love to do a YouTube stream like every week, but I don't like to YouTube stream unless I've dropped like a big video because I don't want my channel to just become me YouTube live streaming a bunch. You know, like I want to make sure that there's a lot of that rock solid content. I'm actually going to film two videos after this live stream. So I'm kind of using today as like a do my makeup and do stuff kind of day. You don't know how to make your resonance small. 
Um, have you listened to the sound a lot? Let's see. I've got so many questions. I want to do more ear training, but there's so many questions. Yes, all the streams that I do here are posted on the channel afterwards. My partner's been very supportive. They asked if they could hear me practice voice, but I feel I'd be too embarrassed. Any tips to get over that fear? Yeah, I think you should hold your partner's hand. I think you should sit together with them and you should voice your fear to them and, and you should be very vulnerable and I think that will make you closer. And uh, it is very scary, but I think that what will happen is you'll find that... Um, you'll find they'll be supportive and um, they'll care for you. And I think that can make it a lot easier. Thank you so much. Okay, there's that. Um, so resonance is what you call, R I don't really call it R1 and R2 anymore. I call it size. Um, but yeah, R1 is like a, a quantifiable meta variable that we can ascribe to the rear vocal chamber. And we could say R2 is a quantifiable meta variable that we can ascribe to the forward chamber. But in general, they're resonance and they're controlled by the size and shape of those containers. So these days when I'm teaching it to beginners, I think about size and shape instead. And then I, I actually do think R1 and R2 has extreme value for people who are very advanced. But if you're not very advanced, it's not really a point for you to think of it that way. You can just think of it like size. And R1 is not just mostly larynx raising. It's kind of a, a combination. Oh, am I still streaming? All of a sudden it says no data. Okay, excellent connection. But yeah, um, you know, it's not just raising the larynx. We do a full reconstruction of the entire throat and pharynx to modify our size. <clears throat> uh, yes, you can email um, You can email either of those right now, Zvlasna. Um because what's going to happen is all the people who've emailed us recently that we're having trouble getting to email-wise, we're going to send the, the automated booking page to, and then you all can book yourself so that it's a lot easier. So if you want to get like first dibs on the automated booking link when it goes live, you can send us an email and we'll hit you up with that. I would very much look forward to the group lessons, not just for help, but the chance to meet some other trans girls. This town's too small. GD, that's exactly what some other people in the group said too. There were some people who were like, I've never met or talked to another trans person in my life. And this has been so empowering being in a group of people. We had we had trans masculine people there as well. And we had non-binary people there as well. It was an awesome gender non-conforming space to work on voice. I would say the majority of people were binary trans femmes though. So, but it was still super amazing. Um, let's see here. Oh, now I want to hold someone's hands while practicing. I know, me too, Salia. Uh, I hope that I can hold someone's hands and practice someday. Oh my God, I just discovered how it worked with feminization with the stream. Now it's really easy from nowhere. You got it. You were at seven months and this stream helped you. Um, so everyone, let's send big hearts in, in chat for, for Nyastra. I think that's amazing. Uh, Nyastra had a breakthrough from our stream today. It's weird how people tell me I sound feminine, but when I hear myself, I don't think I sound feminine. Gosh, Gwendolyn, that is just the challenge of all challenges. I feel like it's so hard to get over that and so hard to work through that. For me, it took a lot of inner, inner introspection and a lot of like inner work to fix that. And, um, you know, I'll give you a tip. For me, I had to use my voice with as many random people as possible because then I was able to build up like a mental bank of like, oh, well, you know, I don't think my voice passes right now, but a thousand people before me thought it passed. And so who's wrong? Am I wrong or are the a thousand people wrong? It allows you to sort of develop like um, like a cognitive like middleware or like a, ar like a cognitive architecture in your mind that intercepts your visceral reaction. So for me, a very long time after I was doing fine with my voice, I was still very dysphoric about it. And I would hear my voice and my visceral gut reaction would be to like want to vomit, you know, or like, oh my God, it's so awful. But then what I learned to do over time is to intercept that visceral reaction and inject the, the lived experience that I had where, you know, it was passing and everybody was giving me this great feedback, even if they didn't know who I was. And so, oh, it's so wonderful to see you as well, Aaron. I hope you've been well. But it would allow me to kind of intercept that, that middle place and then put myself there and control my experience. And other, otherwise, if I wouldn't have done that, it would have been very, very challenging for me to get over that internal dysphoria stuff. You know, I like when I was practicing my voice and coming up with everything, it was really helpful for me to think about voice like, like when I was using my voice with other people, I needed to separate my identity. I needed to separate my validity and my emotional well-being from it. And I just needed to make a sound and see where it was. Oh my God, thank you so much for the super chat, Alyssa. I appreciate that. I just turned the super chat stuff on for the first time like a week ago. And I'm really thankful for that. You're my first super chat ever. I've been exercising in less effective ways. Will that be harder to lose habits? Um, yes and no. I mean, definitely having habits that are built up can make things harder at first. But if you're if you're really paying attention and you're and you're respecting what you're doing and you're you're focusing, I think you can work through a lot of those bad habits pretty easily. Um, 
Hello, Zia. My girlfriend's trans and has worked very hard for a year to make her an absolutely beautiful voice that I adore. I'm just starting myself a few weeks in. I love your videos and your advice. That's so awesome, Jessica. It's so wonderful. Oh my gosh. Thank you so much, Ruth. I appreciate that so much. Thank you for the super chat. That's that's so wonderful and uh, really sweet. Thank you. Um, I'm a year on HRT and I just started getting that weird look from people when I thought, oh gosh, yes, that's definitely a look. We've all been there. Um, I remember that was very much the thing for me. Uh, I would I would do my absolute hardest or I would do like my most best work with appearance you know I try to look as feminine as possible and then I would go out and practice my voice with people um and uh it was it was always an interesting experience um there's definitely that look that people give you though when you're like you look feminine or and then you talk and like, oh, you know but, but hey screw society oh my gosh Ellie you're the third not the second but thank you Ellie Foster I appreciate that so much you guys are really generous and really sweet I I really appreciate it. How do I know if I'm falling into falsetto? Hubari, I actually talked about that the very first question today. I'll go ahead and demonstrate some other examples. So typically what's going to happen is if you're doing an exercise where you start and you go higher and try to get lighter, we can actually hear the falsetto happen if you go too high, like so. Ah. Did you hear that little flip and how it got kind of hollower and it became a little less optimal? Oh, that kind of like sound up here. Ah, that's what you're trying to avoid in falsetto. So if you're practicing with the exercise I gave in my vocal weight or my, my beginner video I just released, one of the easiest ways to make sure that you're avoiding the falsetto is avoid going too high. If you ever go super high, oh my gosh, thank you, Jeremy. I really appreciate you all so much. If you go too high, what that does is it'll typically flip you into falsetto. And so if you can think about going higher, but not too high, you'll typically avoid falsetto. Uh, I was dem demonstrating some here. Now that my voice is a little more warmed up, let me go ahead and record some. Here is a heavy, a light, and a falsetto sound at the exact same pitch. <clears throat> ah, 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 ah. Okay. Now, like I said before, falsetto doesn't have to sound that hollow. With good control, you can make your falsetto sound very rich and full, but an average beginner is gonna get a falsetto that's something like that. So let's go ahead and listen back to these. Uh, and if you're a beginner, you don't have to look at this chart. Uh, the reason why I have this chart up isn't for the visual aspect of it. Like I don't, I don't anticipate beginners to easily be able to like read these charts or anything. It's just cause I don't know. It gives me something to look at while I'm doing this stuff. So let me make myself a little bigger just to make sure beginners aren't trying to read this chart too much. Okay, so here we go. Heavy, light, falsetto. Ah, ah, ah. Listen to the difference there. The falsetto is almost too hollow. Ah, ah, ah. And like I've said several times, falsetto doesn't have to be like that. You can you can really shape your falsetto in a lot of beautiful ways. But that's that's one way that it will often sound for beginners. Let's listen again. Ah, ah, ah. And these are all at the same pitch. So heavy, light falsetto. Let's go ahead and do some ear training isolation. So I'm going to go ahead here and isolate these frequency areas. Once again, if you're a beginner, you don't have to worry about all that. Just listen to the sound and listen to how it makes you feel, what it makes you think. And that's how you do ear training. Ear training isn't about looking at the graph or knowing what's, it's just about listening very carefully. So let's take a listen again here. Heavy, light, falsetto. There's almost like a hollowness, right? It's almost too weak. Now let's do it again. And now bring it all back in. Ah, ah, ah. So there might, you know, so there's a little bit, oh my gosh, thank you, Alyssa. I appreciate that. Or anyone else I missed it. That's, that's so wonderful. Thank you all so much. I didn't anticipate that. I forgot I even turned that on. So thank you. Uh, but you know, this, uh, fal this falsetto versus the light sound, that sounds like, oh, I want to see what this comment says, but it's hidden. That sounds like a baby. Yeah. Uh, and so, you know, it's like when we're doing this falsetto versus light comparison, um, if, as long as when you're doing the pitch exercises where you try to go up and, and reduce the weight, don't go too high. That's an easy trap to fall into falsetto. Listen and, and think, think if it feels too easy. If you feel it like strongly flip, those are all indications you could be getting into falsetto. But I also want to say, since this is the second question we've had on falsetto, falsetto is not super dreaded. It's only bad if you're making this sound when you think you're making this sound. 
So like, and, and those probably sounded really similar on back-to-back -back play, but if you're making the falsetto sound, but you think you're making the other thing, that's when it's bad. But otherwise, I would encourage everybody to play with falsetto. Falsetto can teach you a lot of coordination of your voice. Oh my gosh, Nyastra. Thank you so much. That's crazy. Thank you all so much. Jeez. Um, not what I anticipated. Um, <clears throat> so anyways, um, thanks, really. Uh, so the, um, I've lost my train of thought. You're all are sending me money. So I, okay. Um, yeah. So falsetto is not bad if you know you're doing it. And actually it can teach you a ton of coordinations that are amazing. I think one of the things that allowed me to feminize my voice very quickly was actually the fact that I spent so much time in a really light falsetto before I feminized my voice. So singing in falsetto is great noodling around you know we always we don't ever want to think like any aspect of our voice is bad right like we want to engage with all aspects of our voice to learn as much as we can but if we're trying to be light and balanced and we end up in falsetto then that's like bad if you don't know it okay <clears throat> can the falsetto be can oh yeah absolutely great question Ruth. you can modify your resonance all sorts of ways for falsetto so for instance watch Oh, hold on. So here's a here's a dark resonance. Oh, yeah, you can do all kinds of modification. Although typically, oh, so here's a dark falsetto. Oh, ah, 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 so here's a um a brighter resonance. Holy crap! Thank you so much. I appreciate that. Thank you, Vlasna. Um. And uh, yes, you can combine falsetto, like like something like this, like uh, a whole new world. Ah, ah. I'm not good right now because I haven't warmed up, but last night I was doing it really good. You know that uh, singer who does a whole new world, Aladdin, in both voices? That's an example. That's a wonderful example of really high resonance with a with a falsetto. So what happens is if we think about size versus pitch, like I was talking about earlier, the higher we go in pitch, the higher our resonance needs to be. And so the reason why we associate falsetto with like a masculine or kind of wonky sound is because it typically causes our pitch to run higher than what beginners can modify our resonance at. Ah, uh, um, uh, but like, look, like if I like combine a falsetto with like really bright resonance, then I can make a sound like that, right? Like, and this is like not even really that bad. So like, this is like falsetto. Yeah, Nick Patera, exactly. Nick Patera is a great example of someone singing in falsetto. I would love to demonstrate it for you all right now, but I haven't warmed up. I just basically woke up, used the bathroom, hydrated, and then came and got on this call. So when I'm a little warmed up, I'll sing more for you perhaps. But um, like, so like this is like a falsetto here with, um, you know, like a, a, a one, two, three, four, five. This is a bright thing. Um, and now I've got like a bigger, uh, much bigger size. One, two, one, two, one, two, three, four. So that's what it sounds like if we're modifying resonance while we're in falsetto, right? So all that was falsetto and I was just taking the size and, and changing it. Um, uh, let's see here. I noticed you have really narrow shoulders compared to your old videos. Did you get clavicle shortening or is it the lens? I didn't get clavicle shortening. Um, it's just my camera lens. I used to film with this. And now I film with a Sony a660. And uh, it's pretty great. I love it. It's it's really improved my confidence a lot in front of camera. Um, are the way that Michael Jackson and Jeff Buckley spoke good examples of reduced vocal fold weight? Yeah, like that kind of like, they're a bit inharmonic too. But, but yeah, I could see that. I've not, I don't know who Jeff Buckley is though. So I wouldn't be able to comment on that. You can send a clip and I can do a voice breakdown. Have you ever heard of Marcelitino Pomoy? No, but I love that. Oh, Naya, thank you very, very much. I really appreciate it all. You guys are so sweet. Like I never um, anticipated that. Since you're getting those super chats, can you buy a Nintendo Switch? No, no, no. I'll buy you a GameCube though. And then you can play Melee on the Nintendo GameCube. How do you uh, sing in a woman's voice as soft as the chorus for Lovely by Billie uh, Eilish? I'd have to listen to that song. Uh, but generally, you know, a lot of practice saying light. And also for, for trans feminine people in particular, it's going to be extremely important to learn how to balance your falsetto against your resonance. So uh, a lot of that stuff that we, a lot of times when I get questions about singing from people and they're like, how do you sound so ethereal and light at your highest ranges? Well, I'm in falsetto, but I'm using my resonance in such a way that it allows me to, you know, to stop, to stop my falsetto from sounding like a hootie falsetto, right? Thank you so much, Ashley Jane. Oh my God. 
Dono race? Oh my god, hello, I don't want my name on YouTube. Uh, I just want to say this is such a just for top for 99% of people to roach. Thank you so much for making this accessible and easy. I really appreciate it so much. Please don't stop if you enjoy doing it. I'm not going to lie, I love doing this. I'm trying to rebalance my life a little bit to where I can get back to more music composition, but I'll never stop doing this. And honestly, at this point, I feel like... I feel like it's so much bigger than just me. Like, yes, I'm like a mouthpiece and a spokesperson for this whole movement, but I really feel like not just through trans voice lessons, but through the trans community, a movement has been started where we're taking care of our vocal stuff in our own way. And uh, I love it. And I feel like it, I'm incredibly blessed and incredibly thankful to be like such a messenger and like figurehead of that movement. But, you know, it's definitely not something that's I, I didn't get here solely on my own or whatever and I'm really thankful for everybody and I mean my Patreon in case you guys don't know this like I'll just plug it just because you know it's what you're supposed to do as like a YouTuber my executive director would get mad if I didn't but you know I have a Patreon and there's over a thousand twenty five trans people gender non-conforming people and cis people who believe in this cause of like free resources for the trans voice community and so everything i'm doing on the channel is made possible by my patreon i started doing this out of passion at first but now i very much feel like a servant for the trans voice community and i love that so much it's it's an incredible blessing and i'm very thankful to have that position so thank you all so much for the super chats thank you all so much for the support on patreon i am very dedicated to making the absolute highest quality freest possible resources ever um nothing like even though i teach private lessons and obviously charge for that because that's my own personal time and i charge for group lessons I, you know i want to make all of it free like i want to make every eventually my vision for this channel and for what i want to do is to make it so that there's a place on the internet where literally anyone can go and get the highest level possible vocal education from a static resource that is physically possible that's my mission and uh it, it means a lot to have all your support for real so um you guys are distracting me with money <laughs> uh, let's see let me scroll back up uh how is your health doing since you cut out some ale? um so uh my health is doing a lot better i've uh so in case you don't know i, I got diagnosed with celiac disease that's why there was a kind of a gap in in like intense content from like last september till like just recently it's because i was very sick and i haven't only been well for the last three months and i'm still not exactly well I, i'm weighing 104 pounds right now so i need to put on weight really badly i feel like i look very gaunt so uh, i need to gain more weight and but I'm, I'm doing a lot better with my health thank you for asking it's still it's a challenge every day i think i got gluten a little bit yesterday because i licked an envelope um and i think it had gluten in it so i, I don't know but i'm feeling mostly better today uh, let's see here a vr chat's a great way to practice i feel like vr chat is a very interesting space how do you send clips you should be able to post them in chat here um hypnotic yogurt in vr chat great i love to see people connecting up as well too oh uh, my girlfriend said her world for feminizing your voice oh my gosh i think i've heard of that someone told me that there is like a a vr chat world that's like voice feminization and and they have all this cool stuff and they've linked some of my videos there and they've talked about their journey i think that's beautiful and i think it's amazing that in the metaverse people are able to express that um you feel a lot of strain when you try to sing with smaller resonance yeah that's the challenge right it's all about optimization i spent a lot of time trying to optimize my stuff and i'm still trying to get better every day i certainly don't feel even you know perfectly accomplished now at night when i'm in the studio and i'm recording vocals and i'm all warmed up and i've got my you know and i've got good um good monitoring then i really feel like i'm super in control but like in an environment like this where my i don't have a compressor on my mic so i'll clip it if i go loud and i've got a i don't feel as comfortable singing in this environment but it's definitely challenging what percent of women do you estimate mainly talk in falsetto i'm gonna say ah, uh, this is a tough call i'm gonna say anywhere between one to four percent one to three percent you know voices like lily pichu they're in falsetto so like in case you guys don't know what lily pichu sounds like uh there's there's other people a lot of these like co hyper kawaii super high voices they're in falsetto it's just nobody thinks of it that way because what happens is because once again this idea of 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 of, of um of, uh of, of um, fullness where resonance versus weight and pitch it's like if if you have a passively smaller vocal tract because you didn't experience testosterone then you can go to higher pitches without those higher pitches sounding remarkably different so it makes that's where this illusion of like oh like female voices don't have falsetto which is like a classical opera meme or whatever like that's where this comes from it comes from the fact that the vocal tract is passively smaller in that case so if the pitch starts going way up and way up and way up there's not like an audible 
shift. Whereas if we're working with someone who has experienced testosterone and they don't know how to control their resonance, if they go up, there will be an audible shift where the resonance can't track the, the, the harmonic it was on anymore. And we get this like darkening effect. And then we were like, oh, there's that falsetto sound. But like, here's an example of Lily Pichu's voice. And ah, I would wager, can't say for sure, because once again, when the resonance is really small and the pitch is high, it's hard to really say. Um, but uh, this is... um. Where do I even find this? I don't even know what the best audio file is of, of her voice, but it's like super, super high. Um, let's see. I don't, I don't know. I'm just going to try and click on a YouTube video and see if I can't pull it up. Sorry, I'm not reading chat right now because I'm looking for a video. Is this? Why is it all the videos are her trying to make a deep voice? I want to hear her like her voice. Anyways, is this it? No. <sighs> I can't find it. Anyways, you guys should check out Lily Pichu. That's a female falsetto voice. Okay, let's see. Um, uh, 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 when you tighten R1, can you tighten it to the point of feeling it closed? Yeah, but you shouldn't do that because then you become covered. And a covered sound is not what you want. Uh, you want an open sound, but you want that sound. Ah, uh, ah, uh, par, par. And if I cover it too much, ah, uh, ah. Uh, it'll block everything off it'll also disrupt your vocal folds from producing sound in a quality way because everything's soft tissue and flexible and so by really deforming and warping part of the vocal tract you'll get a significant deformation on the vocal folds too um i've heard oh my god thank you all so much i missed two super chats thank you seriously so much deker thank you uh quakes at xii thank you v leak ah you guys are crazy oh my gosh i did not Okay, I did not anticipate that. Okay, um, back to uh, questions though, because that's that's where the value is at. Let's see, your question, your lifesaver. Thank you. I'm so happy I can help you, Xavier. I I want to. Okay, my mission uh, is liberate trans voice. You know, I want to liberate the voices of trans and gender nonconforming people so that we don't have to. You know, and th and I really want to liberate all voice, but I care the most about trans people in general because I feel that we have been given a burden, not by our own accord, right? I mean, think about it this way. Like, obviously we have our own dysphoria, but then we face this pressure from cis society to conform or to, to fit in or to do this thing. And I think it's just, it's just awful. So uh, I'm very, very big on liberating trans voice and that's very much my goal. So anything we can do. I've heard some trans men who feel very underrepresented. Is there anything you TVL can offer them? Absolutely. Um, I love working with trans men and I definitely, trans masculine people, I definitely want to make resources on that. I'll just be honest with you why i haven't made a resource yet on it um i mean like i can i can do uh um i can do i can do voice i can do voice masculine oh my gosh thank you so much i appreciate that i can do voice masculine techniques but i can't sound male anymore and that's really frustrating so it's like part of a uh, part of the value i feel about what i do is the fact that i'm a living embodiment of what i teach right like my voice is feminine i sing feminine my voice is always feminine it is what it is i can't and I think that that's very powerful in that I'm a direct speaker. And in some ways, when I do transmasculine stuff or work with transmasculine people, it kind of feels like I'm pretending and it's it's not very comfortable. I, I definitely work with transmasculine people and I really care about that. And I really think like my book that I'm working on has transmasculine resources built into it. Um, my group class, we had a transmasculine individual there and they gained a lot from it as well. And it's just like, there's just something about I feel deeply empowered being able to speak from direct experience when I am teaching and when I'm doing trans voice lessons with feminization. And when I'm doing masculinization, yes, I'm speaking from experience and I'm speaking from a place of technique, but it just doesn't feel like, you know what? It feels like a costume or something. I, I don't, it feels awkward. And so I really want to make resources for trans masculine people. And I absolutely will at some point, but I just, I, I believe that trans masculine people kind of deserve better. If that makes sense. I don't know if that makes sense. I'm sure everyone would be like, no, it's still very helpful. I get that. Like, but I just, I want to see something incredible for trans masculine people. Something that's, you know, I would love to find a trans masculine person in the world who maybe wants to join trans voice lessons and work together. That would be incredible because I think accurate representation is really important. And I don't think I accurately represent the trans masculine identity or trans masculine people as a whole. And yes, I can teach techniques, but at the end of the day, you know, it's, it's a little less authentic for me to do. And I think that they just deserve better. And, um, 
but I still I still will make resources for transmasculine people at some point. Um, 105, why are you so underweight? Because of celiac disease, unfortunately. I My lowest floor of weight was 110, and then I got sick, and now I'm 105. Um, another thing, too, I, I really want to make androgynous resources because that is something I feel from an authentic place I can talk from because I, I actually love doing androgynous voices, and I, I love being androgynous sometimes. So I feel like I can represent that more accurately as well. Um, let's see here. Oh gosh, there's so many things. Very proud of you. I can't, I literally can't go into VR chat because I always, I understand VR chat. Uh, oh my gosh, I'm way behind. So I'm going to skip a little bit and scroll down a little bit. Can you, oh, hi Z, it's Dom. Can you demonstrate a younger R1 and R1? Yeah. Um, like, um, uh, like, so like younger kind of things, like it's not just about like resonance, but it's like also about like, um, um, it's like also about like how you like um like talk like you like kind of like cut you like cut stuff off you know um my throat often feels sore when I talk for extended periods of time while trying to reduce vocal weight is that a sign you're doing it wrong might be a sign you're trying to go too high with it it just depends I'd have to hear the thing uh you definitely shouldn't feel like your like your throat is getting sore from doing it if anything it should increase your sustain at higher pitches it shouldn't decrease your sustain been doing voice training for two months i managed to sound androgenic today i've been so much happier oh my god i'm so blessed to read that decur i know i'm really far behind on messages and stuff but uh, i i just want to make sure lily peach has always been interesting all right i'm scrolling down so i can catch up if you had any important messages that you wanted me to see repost them because i am now scrolling down ouija thank you for the mission i struggle so hard with resins but you give me so much hope I can do a mean Mickey Mouse. I'm more of a voice artist. Voice artists are greatly welcomed in our community. I love that so much. I I just love voice. Um, thank you for so much for setting up the experimentation workshop next week, by the way. Experimentation, I can't wait. It's going to be fun. I was going to do that today, but I, I kind of felt kind of sicky yesterday. I wasn't sure how I'd feel today. And because I felt sicky yesterday, I didn't get to film YouTube content. So instead today I did my makeup. I'm going to do a live stream. And then after this, I'm going to film one or two YouTube videos for my new editor. It's going to be the first video they've ever edited. Um, Alyssa, I know you did. Thank you though. I appreciate it. Laverne Cox, even though speaking in a similar low resonance video, singing opera. That's awesome. Laverne Cox is a great, is, is awesome. So trans voice liberation title for the book. That's true. Uh, I think the book is titled, we've already got it, uh, The Art of Voice Alteration. You mentioned you opened, you know, let's throw, oh my gosh, thank you. Uh, you won, but what cost, let's see what you think, okay, scrolling down, scrolling down, scrolling down. Testosterone will help, yeah, that's true, testosterone will help transmasculine people, but it's still, there are transmasculine people out there who will never, who don't want to take testosterone, or, you know, who, who desire and, and deserve good resources for them. So, um, but yes, typically um, male to female HRT does not influence the voice as significantly. Uh, let's see, any tips for muscle tension dysphonia? Yeah, semi-occluded vocal tract exercises, light motions of the voice, gently moving your pitch around, really trying to relax. You can almost try to relax your neck muscles while you're doing it. If you have muscle tension dysphonia from, uh, from resonance, there's a very light, a very, very light larynx wiggle you can do. Uh, you just, very light, and you don't want to talk while you're doing this or doing anything, but you just relax. And you just kind of wiggle it around just a little bit, and that can help. You can also massage uh, the omohyoid and thyrohyoid muscles, which are these kind of like supportive muscles that typically can get sore if you're not doing resonance optimally. Also, if you have a lot of muscle tension dysphonia, there is the sternocleid mastoid muscle, which runs from the back of the sort of ear area the mastoid, the, or the, so there's the masseter. If you have a lot of tension, I recommend massaging your masseter muscle, which is like your, your chewing jaw muscle right here on the side of the face. A lot of people, when they try to learn modification of voice, they'll get a little bit of masseter tension and it feels so amazing to just massage that and work it out. Uh, so there's that. And then the sternocleid mastoid runs from behind the ear where the mastoid, I think it's called the mastoid process. And it runs all the way down the neck. It's that large band of muscle that connects to your sternum. You can actually see it like right here. And the sternocleid mastoid often takes on tension with untrained voices and you don't want it to because it's such a supportive part of your, of your neck and head structure. And so uh, massaging those muscles can be really really powerful and beneficial to help you with muscle tension dysphonia but really if you're experiencing muscle tension dysphonia break apart what you're doing don't worry about feminization don't worry about your goal with voice work on getting that tension out of your voice slow things down take things lighter you can use a straw you can use humming really try to focus on producing sound comfortably that should be the key element that you're thinking about when you're trying to work on muscle tension dysphonia and then once you can establish that you can produce sound in a very comfortable way then then you can try to work on you know adding everything back in while keeping the tension away 
Yeah. So instead of pa pa, I do ba ba, like I'm cooing. That's great. You see, the only difference between pa pa and ba ba is voiced or voicelessness. The p sound and the b sound are functionally identical in their phonetic behavior, except one of them is a voiced plosive and one of them is a voiceless plosive. And so actually, we can think that everything you would do with the pa <clears throat> translates nearly perfect to the ba. So very good stuff. Now, of course, there's a little bit more nuance than that, but you know, we're, we're keeping it simple. Uh, I had an incredible question from my group class. I think it was towards the, I think it was week 11. Somebody asked me, well, if P and B, I think if there's any voice geeks in here, they're going to love this. Somebody asked me a brilliant question. They said, well, if P and B are the same thing functionally and phonetically, just voice or voiceless, how come if you're whispering, you can hear if someone's making a B or a P? And that's an awesome question. And I started thinking about it and I realized actually the anticipation of voicing or voicelessness actually changes the pressure behavior. So even though they are functionally identical, there is a significant difference in the way that the pressure comes into the thing um, because the P builds up more pressure, whereas the B is like this voiced thing. And so we're used to having less intraoral pressure because we have more subglottal pressure from the voiced onset. So it's actually really interesting that we they are functionally identical, but there's actually a really nuanced level there that a lot of people don't think about, which is really, really cool to me. So anyways, that's some, some cool geekery stuff. Um, <clears throat> thanks for showing me all the depths of my own voice, me as a voice artist, feeling it love. Oh, that's so awesome. Thank you for sharing that amazing story about your voice. That, that really means a lot. I love empowerment through voice. It, it blows my mind how powerful voice is. I had this student, um, if P is plosive is B blosive. I love that. Uh, I had this amazing student the other day who's really been struggling, not just, not in private lessons, but just struggling with voice in general. And they did struggle, um, our, our first lesson and they practiced and came back and we're like, I don't know, I'm still struggling quite a bit. I don't think I can hear the thing right. And they had an enormous breakthrough in our second lesson. And, you know, they started crying. And uh, I am just moved by that. It's just, voice is so incredibly powerful. And I think that to very, very few people, voice means as much to as people with dysphoria. You know, we have a real, like, survival need for, for voice assistance. And so it's a very awesome place. It's a very awesome thing to be a part of. Um... Hi, uh, that, hi Z, it's Dom. Can you demonstrate moving the resonance around? I won't say moving the larynx, but moving resonance. Yeah. Um, yeah, so, um, so I'm just going to go ahead and, uh, just start talking and I'll just, like, fluctuate between the two. Um, and, uh, yeah, and, and now I've got a much smaller mouth. Um, and now I've got, like, a bigger mouth, but I'm still keeping my throat small. Um, and now I've got a big everything. And now I've got a, now I've got a big, now I've got a small mouth but a big throat. Uh, and now I've got everything small again. Uh, so, yeah, there is some dynamic movements of resonance for you. Isn't it interesting how we can actually hear the sort of mouth and throat somewhat independent of each other, right? If, um, if I have a big throat, but a very small mouth, it makes me sound like that. It's kind of a weird, silly noise, right? And if I do the opposite, ah, uh, if I have a big mouth, but a very small throat, then I just sound a lot more like, like kind of rounder and like darker. I actually really like a sound like this. Um, and if I make the mouth small while I'm doing that, then we get this effect. Um, and if I make the, oh, and if I, if I make the throat bigger, we get that. We get that effect. Isn't it awesome how many combinations we can have? One of my favorite things about voice is when people finally learn how to control their oral size and their pharynx size, and they're able to like play those against each other in such a free way. Cause I think it really opens up a lot of creative decision making about what kind of voices we're going to be using. It's very awesome stuff. Also, I'm starting to get warmed up. Notice I haven't cleared my throat in a little bit. Let's see here. Do you know of any exercise to help with breath support? Great question, Ella. Breath support is a bit of a misnomer. Breathing is very important and balancing your breath is very important. But we need to understand that breath support does not exist without some respect to closure. We we produce sound and then we close the, the airflow. We push air and then we block the airflow. And when we block that airflow, then we create pressure. And that pressure is what moves the vocal folds. And so when we think about um, breathing exercises, we really need to think of them in respect to some closure. So breathing exercises with an S, and trying to make that very clean and comfortable and stable can be good because an S creates occlusion. Um, practicing, honestly, just any sound production thing where you're working on creating a pure sound ah, is good. Trying to practice with increasing volume and decreasing volume without allowing breathiness to enter. Ah, 
that kind of thing is really good. I mean, there's honestly so many ways, but the key here is that when we're thinking about breath exercises and voice, I personally have not found very much use of doing them by themselves. There's definitely, you can use like breathing techniques on their own to like induce relaxation and help people with muscle tension dysphonia. But if we're thinking about breathing and breath as it relates to voice, we have to think about it in respect to some blocking force, whether that's an S or even doing something like and trying to balance the amount of with the sound. That's a great breathing exercise as well, making sure it's very stable and balanced. When we're thinking about breathing exercises for voice, it's all about can we produce a stable, clean thing through some form of resistance? Oh my gosh. Gosh, thank you all so much. Um, I, I'm, I'm getting caught with all these lovely questions. There's so many good things. Um, any chance you'd be looking for a... Yeah. Yes, I am literally looking for a web developer. And yes, you are right. Transvoicelessons.com is super bare. And yes, email me ASAP because that's exactly what I'm looking for. Um, I have a lot of plans for, I actually have some extremely secret things I can't talk about that I need a web developer for. I've been talking and I've actually about, okay, I've, I'm kind of, I've loosely talked to a couple other web developers, but I haven't found someone who's like, I'm ready to do this, you know, give me, give me the money and I'll make the thing, you know? Uh, I have a great plan for it. So yes, definitely email me Vlasna. I am 100% looking for a web developer, especially since you're a full stack developer. That's like even perfect. So let's see what, let's see what we can do. I, that sounds really awesome. Um, posting this because it got buried. Have you heard anything about the NYU Voice Center? Apparently they do have a trans speech therapy and healthcare plan. Um, I haven't. Most SLPs, most, I won't say all, operate on a fairly kind of outdated model. But if your insurance covers it, that's perfect. You know, any amount of voice work is going to be awesome. So, you know, they can definitely assist you. And I'm sure that they'll have great intention for you and they'll do their best to help you. And the fact that that's at no real expense of your own, I think that's lovely. Um, I don't know if they'll have what you need for resonance, but hey, maybe my channel can fill that gap in for you. It just depends, you know. I'm actually working a lot more with SLPs and helping them kind of catch up in the field and, and also integrating some of what they do that's really, really positive and really good. I think there is nobody in the world better than SLPs at getting people to relax their phonation and create healthy sound production. I think that's just what their expertise is in. But their expertise usually isn't in pure feminization or masculinization. So I think they're often very, very good at the sound production component, but very, very weak at the sort of intersections of feminization stuff. But no, I think that's amazing and you should definitely pursue that. And I think that'll be great for you. That's awesome. What causes a voice to still sound masculine when the voice is thin and the R1 is raised? Honestly, uh, Coder Minion, it can just be fluidity. You can do every tech, um, like, like, um, like if I have every technique, right? Like I got a small size and everything, but I, right. I had good resonance. I had good weight, but I didn't really sound that good because I wasn't fluid, right? We have to learn how to move inside the thing and make it feel balanced and natural. The individual techniques on their own, like weight and resonance and so forth are an incomplete picture. See, one of the things that separates beginners from intermediates from advanced people is beginners, they think about component by component. They think about, oh, my weight and my resonance. Then the intermediate person thinks, oh, my weight and resonance at the same time. And then the advanced person realizes that none of those things actually exist. And it's, <laughs> you know, it's, it's like it kind of breaks down. The more you know, the more it breaks down into like realizing that there's infinite relationships between things that are hard to comprehend. Uh, and thank you so much for the super chat again. Um, uh, I, I missed the I missed the one that was pink, um, the the pixel pit. Thank you so much. And Macabake, if I missed you, uh, I'm just getting lost in questions, which are all really wonderful things. Um, so thank you all so much. And Vlasna, I'm excited to talk to you about the web dev stuff. That that's a really important thing. Do you remember how long it took you? Uh, do you remember vaguely uh, how long it took you to feel like you weren't putting on a voice in the beginning? Yeah, I would say about a year and a half, but I was grinding every day nonstop. So, yeah, about, oh my gosh. Ruth, oh my gosh. Oh my God, okay. Um, geez. Oh, my camera battery just died. One second, I'm going to go get another battery and we're going to continue the stream. One second, one second. Thank you all so much. Oh my God, that's a crazy super chat. And I'll come back for more questions. Oh my gosh, you guys are crazy. Be right back one second. Thing. One of the awesome things with my Sony is that I, I bought four batteries for it and I, uh, I've got four batteries now. So 
there were a lot of times when I would be filming YouTube videos, my old camera and the battery would die and I didn't have a way to get it. So now I've got, this should just turn back on in a few seconds, I think. Now I've got batteries on tap. Oh wait, hold on, let me reset it. Okay, 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 okay. Oh my gosh, that's so crazy. You guys are crazy, thank you so much. That's honestly insane. Can you all see me now? Okay, we're good now, I think. Oh wait, and then it turned off? Oh, cause I actually turned off. Oh, I, it fixed itself originally, but I didn't, cause the stream delay or whatever, I, I didn't, okay. I get why that was like that, okay. Oh my God, thank you again, Roos. That's so generous. I, I seriously appreciate that so much. I'm gonna put half of that in our trans youth, vo trans youth, trans youth voice fund. So um, some trans girl out there can, can get uh, resource access even easier. Um, so thank you, that's where that will go. Uh, let's see, um, can you, uh, let's see here. Yeah, now the Mickey Mouse thing, it was about a year and a half, or the putting on a voice definitely was about a year and a half for me. Um, Dom, th I'm so glad I was able to demonstrate your questions and you, I really love those questions too. I hope you've been well. Uh, have you been... Dimash SOS and explain how he sings. He's the, as the greatest singer. No one can explain how he sings. <laughs> Maybe. I'll take a listen to that a little later though. I, I wrote it down. Do you find it a benefit in lip trills? Yeah, actually, that's a great question. Uh, lip trills are good for, someone asked me earlier about breathing techniques or whatever. Lip trills are pretty good for that too. Once again, lip trills create a resistance force, which allows you to practice semi-occlusion much easier. So it's very similar to like the or mm. They're all ways to block the vocal tract to build up more pressure, which makes it easier to do stuff. Good, I'll be looking forward to that email. Uh, that's perfect for me because I can get my voice on food and pass over Discord, but poor vocal quality when it struggles with shouting. Yeah, shouting. So fluid equal more technique. Not exactly, Jessica. Um, more like more dynamicism around technique. It's like once you start to learn some of the basic techniques, then try to push them. Do Put yourself in, an, in strange situations with them vocally where you try to do things you've never tried to do before. Or it's, it's less so just about like, oh, a more technique to fix on fluidity and more about getting yourself in as many situations as you can. It's kind of like in melee, it's not that you just want to go in the lab and, and grind your, your, you know, your, uh, your wave shine out of shield or whatever. It's that, cause you won't be able to necessarily apply that wave shine out of shield in game. Instead, you actually want to experience the whole process and the whole game and find moments where, you know, the situation arises to use that technique. So love that. Love that we've got beatboxers here. I don't know if you know this, but there's an awesome member of the, uh, the trans voice community, Savvy. Uh, she's an amazing beatboxer and I would definitely recommend checking out her stuff, especially if you're interested in voice feminization, but also want to do beatboxing. I think she'd be cool to do that. Uh, let's see. Um, ah, 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 I mentioned it. This bitch got famous. I'm, my mind's blown. Roos is so generous. That's, I have to, I have to give back and I'm just going to take that and do some, um, do some, uh, yeah, to put that in the youth fund. That's that's super blessing. Uh, do you ever get invited on a podcast? Uh, yeah, actually. I've been invited on a podcast called The Grab Bag, which is a music podcast. And then I got invited on the the um, uh, Now in Zen, which is a microtonal Zen harmonic podcast hosted by Stephen Weigel. Um, and uh, that was a great podcast. We talked a lot about stuff. You become a ninja. Ah, okay. Ooh, my voice is starting to feel good. After about an hour of like just doing stuff with my voice, it starts to feel really good. It's 1.30 a.m. for me. Are you going to keep the VOD? You betcha. Uh, I've heard a lot of mixed opinions about speech therapists for voice training. And it's mixed. I mean, I think if you've got it on insurance, yeah, go for it. But generally speaking, I think a lot of speech therapists uh, aren't really trained in, in what's needed to be trained in for voice feminization. There are some that are, though. Um, alive. Can you tell us about this fund? First time I've heard about it. Yeah, so right now we actually have a fund that was started by, um, by a member of the group class for trans people of color to access voice, voice resources uh, free. So there's someone there that's going to be paid forward. But then we also have this program going on where people will contribute to a trans voice youth fund. And when kids send us emails and they're like, hey, I don't really have money, but I want to learn how to change my voice. I'm really dysphoric about it. And, you know, and their parents aren't supportive or whatever, then uh, we just give them lessons for free and I just pay myself out of the fund. So it's kind of like a way for us to give access to people who don't have access to it. Um, right now, there is that fund for um, a trans person of color and then also the fund for trans youth people. So a lot of the community 
is very interested in paying it forward to try to give people who don't have maybe as much opportunity to access those kinds of things. And so we try to use those funds uh, that are given to us by the community for people who are in need. Like, right, if, if there's someone who's like, you know, uh, like if there's like some like trans youth person who's like, I don't know, like a TikTok star and they make like millions of dollars, like we probably won't let them tap into that fund, you know? But if there's someone who's really struggling and needs help, then that's there for them. Um, so, and it's very, it's very spiritually fulfilling to do that as well. So <clears throat> what are good quick ways to warm up? Uh, I like to just hum. I like to wiggle the pitch around and move things around and just play a lot with voice. Um, okay, let's see. I feel like my voice is better or worse depending on who I'm talking to. Yes, that's normal. That's a, uh, it's like your environment is part of your voice because your voice is behavior, right? And so for instance, if your behavior, your behavior is influenced by your environment. If you were in a burning building, you would act different than if you weren't. Well, the same thing is true with voice and voice is a sort of emergent process of behavior. So when you're around different environments, your voice will change. And what we try to do is when we're in those environments, we try to control and set our voice how we want it so we can actually start to push the behavior in those environments to come out more naturally that way instead. Uh, what is your highest and lowest note? Lowest note right now without straw base is like a C3 or a D3 on a, uh, most days. Uh, highest note right now is about, uh, well, if I'm counting M3, probably like a C8 or C7, something like that. Yeah, C8, uh, somewhere around there. I think I hit a D8 once too, but... Addy can go higher than me with pitches, but uh, with clear singing, I can get up to about an E or F6 pretty comfortably. Hey Z, I find myself sounding thicker whenever I can't produce vocal fry, and I'm only able to produce vocal fry after using my voice for a long time. Yeah, that probably means that you're sort of, um, well, I oftentimes see this, this tendency for people to have trouble doing vocal fry if they're like actively holding like a lot of weight. Think of it like a muscle and if that muscle's all bulgy, it's less likely, if it's more firm, how about that? If your vocal folds are more firm, they're not gonna wanna do creak as much. So when we do a creak, we really like loosen, get really lazy and lax with our vocal folds uh, and they kind of rub together and, and pop and creak like that. So it might be that you're holding a bit too much like firmness, that's a weird way to describe it, but it might be like you're holding too much of the vocal folds still. Zia, uh, if you're doing if you're doing everything rightly, should one actually hear a difference or will it sound the same yet feel different? You should hear a difference. I mean, not everyone has great ears though. So I mean, you know, there's a lot of times where I'm with a student and I hear a huge difference. And I'm like, I don't hear a difference. So I wouldn't use either of those as the sole indicator. I would kind of combine them. Uh, let's see here. I have another question. I've noticed that my voice passes when I'm soft-spoken, especially on Discord, but then I suddenly sound like a teenage boy when shouting across the room. Yeah, so what that means is that when you push harder, you probably dropped your resonance a little bit. Um, a very common thing. The louder we get, uh, and the, well, there's kind of a couple options to that. I really want to make a video on volume soon because I think it's a really fascinating topic. Um, but one of the things there that that's probably happening is as you're increasing weight, as you're increasing pressure and force, it's causing the vocal tract to re-expand a little bit. So I would recommend uh, uh, starting like your like soft-spoken thing and, and working on going up in pitch and, and keeping it together like ah, uh, 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 hey, ah. Uh, you know, playing around with that. How do you want to, uh, how can you contribute to that? Uh, email support at Trans Voice Lessons and Kylie can get all of that clarified for you and how to do that. Oh my gosh, I don't even know what that is. What currency is that? That's a, that's a shape I've never seen before. Thank you so much though. And I'm, I'm very blessed and thankful for that. What currency is that? That's really cool looking. Um, can you clarify what you said about SLPs? Sure. Okay. So SLPs don't really practice what they teach in the sense that when when someone is going to school for SLP, they're not te they're not learning ear training. They're not learning how to feminize their voice. They're not learning how to masculinize their voice. They learn about rehabilitation and vocal physiology and vocal pathology. And they're very very good pathologists. But the deal with with feminization and masculinization is we're not doing rehabilitation. We're doing habilitation. And so it's a little bit outside of what they normally would operate in. Speech language pathologists are trained in taking voices that are disordered and making them not disordered. And then somewhere along the line, they realized there was this demand, both through the insurance companies and through the, through the demand of trans people to help people with trans voice. So their field slightly adapted and they've had a lot of research come into their field and a lot of it is pretty shallow. I mean, there's a lot of this eification of the vowel and, you know, basically it, most people, if they go to a speech pathologist, 
most, not all, but most people, they'll basically get like 12 weeks of lightening their voice. You know, semi-occluded vocal tract exercises and using mum, mum, mum to try to change your resonance. And it, there's not like a lot of like rich detail about what resonance is, how it works, and not even what it is, because that's not really important, but how you can control it and, and separating it from other variables because they don't do it themselves, right? They're like passive observers of, some people do, there are definitely some SLPs in the field who have been stepping up to the plate and, and trying to make a bigger impact. And there's honestly a group of SLPs that I've actually met with recently that are doing their best to try to push the field for. I, I think in a couple years, we'll see SLPs that are w more well-equipped. But at the moment right now, the, the average you know, basic hospital SLP has a pretty minimal understanding of voice feminization beyond use a semi-occluded vocal tract exercise to try to get someone to go higher in pitch and get lighter you know, and then the way that they talk about resonance is like forward placement, forward focused kind of stuff, which is, which just tends you to raise your R2 and not really address root resonance, which is the most important thing. So that's what I mean. But I think they're great. I, I actually love, love, love when a student of mine is also working with an SLP, because that means then it's like, I get to, um, I get to have them, you know, work with someone who's really good at helping them relax their voice. And that's great. Okay. Let's see here. Oh, did something happen to the stream? I saw it like, it like spike, it like fell really hard, but now we're back up to what it was. It was weird. There was like a huge like tank. Let's see. Does Z have a Discord server? I do. I'll go ahead and plug this in case anyone wants to join the uh, free or support the free creation of resources. I do have a Patreon and we have a quite a vibrant community. It's a social community, but also a voice learning community. And I do workshops there. So if anyone wants to join that community, you can join there. And all of that is what allows me to do trans voice lessons as a YouTube channel because it just, it lets everything um, work much better. Uh, let's see. That's an Israeli new shekel. Oh, that's so cool. Thank you for, I love that. I've been learning so much about uh, Israeli sort of culture and stuff. When I say M1, I mean just with, yeah, absolutely. Uh, let's see here. Can We can push our M1 higher, but that's a control thing. That is correct. Hey Z, I'm catching up. Z said I can go higher. I can sometimes, but I can't inconsistent. Is it pos possible to push? Oh, I just saw this. Are most plans going to get cheaper now that booking goes off the emails? Yep, actually. That is going to happen. Now that there's less overhead stuff, things are going to get a little bit cheaper indeed. Now, I still don't plan on selling my time for cheap because, you know, my Patreon is enough to live off of. So my lessons are like bonus. So it's like um, I want to make music. And so I'm constantly like balancing like, well, I, this is eating a single hour of my day over and over. So I have to charge based on my demand and stuff. So let's see here. Um, also, is it possible to push? Yeah, th that is true. Um, yeah, how to work on voice as a vocal underdoer. Um, check out, uh, check out this website, Dr. James Thomas's. He's got some great strategies for you. It's just really basic stuff, i.e. use your voice more, try to play at different volumes, do different stuff. You know what I mean? It's, it's pretty basic stuff about just using your voice more, different volumes, playing at different pitches, trying to control in that way uh, under doer so it's it's not really like a hyper specific kind of thing uh, you'll just really want to use your voice more push your voice in more places play around with things um foundations let's see here i i put a link to it in the the last video i made i can't find it right now i don't want to get too far behind on questions looking for a link oh my gosh thanks um let's see i don't think so I don't think that there is a two in experience though. Um, there is an event. I think it's the first, not the third, right? Yeah, on the first, there's a workshop happening on the server uh, where we're going to be playing with voice as a group and everything like that. Let's see here. Um, can you discuss how you would sing the E vowel with E with A4? Yeah. E. Uh, well, E. E. I. Tiny mouth, tiny, tiny, tiny mouth. I would actually first start practicing that in falsetto and trying to tune the, the mouth space to one of the harmonics of the, of the falsetto sound. That's hard. So I'd practice that way. 
Oh, and Lyra, I was literally the entire time I was just now doing that. You, I was literally thinking about you, Lyra, straight up. I, but when, the, when someone asked that question, I literally thought, God, I really need to reach out to Lyra so I can do that with her. Gosh, that's actually so funny. Um, let's see here. Yeah, right. I agree with that, Coder Minion. But still, if it's covered by insurance, it's not going to do any harm, you know? Hi, Z. What can you do so that your voice doesn't become fatigued after speaking for an hour or two? That shouldn't happen. There's either something happening with your resonance being not optimized or something happening with your weight being too heavy or your voice and your vocal folds uh, having not a good enough balance and so it's a bit impure. Something's happening there that's making it hard for you. So I would really try to reflect and see what's making it feel uncomfortable and how you can optimize it because that, that shouldn't be that way, okay? Um, what are some good examples of androgynous voices? It's a good question. I, I just think there's so much variety of androgyny. It depends on what kind of androgyny you're talking about. Like if we're talking about feminine androgynous or masculine androgynous, are we talking like genuine, like, like, like sort of you can't sex the voice, you know, there's no gender to it at all. It, I think it just depends because uh, there's a lot of voices that are masculine that lean androgynous or feminine that lean androgynous. Uh, and then it's kind of rare to hear, to hear a voice in the wild that's purely androgynous because society pushes you away from that. Um, so typically people who have genuinely androgynous voices are people who have trained towards it. And I think that's pretty amazing stuff and very beautiful. Hi, Zia. How do I get a hold of you? I sent an email for lessons. Alexandria, wonderful question. So look, let me just say this again for anyone who just joined or anyone who's real struggling. The email thing has been a absolute disaster. There is anywhere between six to 9,000 people who have emailed us for lessons in the last year and a half or so, or last year. And it's a massive graveyard of missed messages. And there's no way that they're ever gonna be gotten to. Well, some of them will. But here's what we're doing instead. We are about to launch auto booking. So you'll be able to book yourself. And so we'll send out, a, I'll either post about it on the server or you can send an email right now and say, hey, I'm interested in booking myself. And then we can give you priority access to that. But basically what's gonna happen is we are now switching to acuity booking. So it will all be done by itself. And anyone who wants to take lessons, they can just go and look at my calendar, see what my availability is and book themselves, pay for it there. And the lesson is set up. This will also allow people to access group lessons much easier. We are done doing manual booking. It is a disaster with the amount of demand that we have and now that we have another teacher that works clover which if you guys don't know clover awesome teacher great uh, colleague of mine and um so we have another teacher and we have these group classes and we're trying to gear up for these webinars. And at that point, it is impossible to coordinate and juggle all of that manually. So we are doing away with manual booking. We will still have a customer support connection so that everyone can sort of still access a human being if they need to or if they have questions about things. But we are moving to auto booking and it's gonna make life a million times easier. And it's gonna allow me to work with other instructors much easier. There's actually a vocalist who I met recently that I'm incredibly inspired by and I love her voice and she's amazing and she's trans femme and I think she's going to be the next TVL like teacher uh, like on board with us so really excited about that and so uh, we should have three three teachers soon uh, which is really exciting and auto booking is going to make all that easier so if you sent out a message for lessons and you didn't hear back I'm really sorry it's a graveyard of hundreds of messages. I mean, there's some days where we get 20 or 30 messages, 20 or 30 inquiries at, in one day. And then it's like, wow, okay, how do we get through that? And then it's like, well, now we're also trying to book group classes. So how do we get through that? Spoiler alert, you can't. So uh, we're fixing it all. It's going to be a lot better. Let's see here. Scrolling down, scrolling down. I've got my second lesson with a local coach tomorrow. We haven't really done anything yet. She doesn't seem to understand any of the basics. How can I get the best out of her? If you want to get the best out of her, I would say try to work on having her support you in pitch and weight training. Like, I think that's probably the least specialized thing that any general vocal teacher should be able to execute with you. So try to focus what you can get out of her. I would say try to focus on having her help you or, or having her help you build a rich and clean foundation for your voice. Okay, that would be the main suggestion I'd have for you and what to get out of her. I think if you if you think she doesn't really understand much about what's going on, I think trying to really get good resonance information out of her is probably going to be pointless. So you should really just focus on give, using her abilities as a vocalist to help you find very smooth, comfortable, fluid, clean vocalization. The eval is tough to sing. It's because you have to format track with the, with the mouth. And so it requires a very, very small vocal tract. Can you whistle like Mariah Carey? I can whistle, but not like Mariah Carey. 
I think the only person who can whistle like Mariah Carey is Ariana Grande. Um, not really. I'm sure there's other people too, but I haven't learned whistle that well, but I can do screechy teapot like whistles, but I can't really sing with it very well. Now, some people say my upper M, my, some people say my upper M2 is actually falsetto. Yeah, actually, Alyssa, we have that now, support at transvoicelessons.com, but now I'm done using that because Google glitched us, and now half of our calendar invites don't actually send to people. So I'm back to using transvoicelessons at gmail.com in the, in the meantime. That's a lot of people. It is a lot of people. Also, really cool name. Your name is 223033. Did you intentionally make that username to post on my, dis did you intentionally make that YouTube username to post on my channel? You had to have. There is no way in this universe that you have the name 22, 30, 33 ratio without that being an intentional nod to me. Please say it so. Please say it so. I can hear that that chord in my head right now. Undecimal add four super fourth or undecimal sus super fourth. Love that chord. It's beautiful. In case you guys don't know that chord, how about we just go ahead and play it for everybody? The chord of this user who just posted in their username is this. 223033, undecimal super four triad. Isn't that beautiful? You can add the 40 if you want the, the super seventh. Also add the regular minor seven. Someone said Jacob Collier in disguise. I think Jacob Collier is a great musician, but he doesn't know 22, 30, 33. Come on now. You know, he uses five limit just intonation in 12 EDO frameworks, which is cool. I'm not trying to hate on him, but he's definitely not like a, a Zen harmonist. You know what I mean? Um, so let's see here. Uh, how does speech Addy thinks you need to hear that? Okay. There's so many amazing questions. Booking poggers. Isn't that exciting that it's going to be better? Aren't you guys excited for the new phase of trans voice lessons where we can have all kinds of cool programs and offer discounts and actually do like stuff like that instead of just having this like graveyard of inbox emails of people who desperately need help that aren't going to hear it back from me because we peaked on that ability to do volume through email. Uh, what's the best way to get rid of heaviness? I made a video on vocal fold mass, uh, a, little, a little bit outdated, but I just recently released a video that has four exercises that's all about getting rid of vocal weight. So that would be great. Does that mean we won't be speaking to Kylie anymore? Everybody's sad about that. You can still speak to Kylie if you want. You can still email her and, and talk to her, but the auto is gonna be great. Uh, no, I've not heard of that channel, Coder Minion. Any tips for maintaining clean M2 in the M range? It's both adducted and doesn't tend towards... Uh, it depends on what you mean by mid-range, because what I just did feels like mid-range. I like to start high with a lot of adduction, and then I like to bring it down and try to keep it together. Yes, I do play drums, and yes, they are ready to track at any given time. All I have to do is hit record, and I get to play drums. Alive. Now that person with the name 223033 has not posted. Tell me that name was made for this channel, please. Oh, I, you said 9,000 people, but you got to admit that that was, that was a, a, you knew I'd see that, right? Now you've got my brain going. I've actually have that, I have that chord tuned on my piano right now. My physical piano has a 223033 on it. Probably the only physical piano in the world that has that on it right now. Let's see. Oh my God, this is awesome. There's no such thing as coincidence. <laughs> Oh my gosh, that reminds me of that one dude. I love that. That guy, is his energy is just wild. Giving Sid Meier's Civilization soundtrack, love that. What application is that which plays the chords? This is Scala. Scala is an entirely free application developed by Emmanuel de Coupe in 1990-something. And it's a, op not open source, it's a closed thing, but uh, here, yeah, Emmanuel F. de Coupe or whatever. And it's an incredible microtonal program. It lets you do anything you would ever want with microtonality. And this is my chord library that I've been building for a while. It's a little bit outdated. I've got a lot more chords than this now. But this allows me to navigate primodality, which is my primary theory that I've advanced and, and brought forth into the microtonal community. 
uh, I do have, it is a just intonated chord. Yes. You know, someone asked me on my, on my Q and A video, I'm going to film later, but someone asked me, um, what is, what are those numbers in my Instagram? Those numbers are, are chords. They're sounds. So like, for instance, you know, I think I have an Instagram post with, uh, with this sound in decimal minor nine, 11 with a falling comma. second with a major pentad upper structure that means the major pentad here is there major lydian pentad Ooh. superimpose the neutral away uh, hi z thank you for being you and helping so many people i'm thank you i'm i'm happy to be me and i'm happy to help so many people uh have you worked with anyone with hypothyroidism if so do you notice anything different not I, I think i have worked with people with hypothyroidism but i haven't noticed any particular differences my dad actually has hypothyroidism so i hope i don't end up getting that um hopefully not let's see um celiac is enough for one person hi z can you give me some general tips about laughing yeah actually we just had a class on this in my group course um i would strongly recommend faking your laugh at for like sitting around in your room and literally fake laughing if it helps you you can play music to cover it up but you need to get comfortable fake laughing in order for you to interact with some of the techniques that are going to be used in laughing it's hard to genuinely fake laughter um, and it feels really awkward and really weird, which is why it's hard for people to practice and get comfortable with their laughter. But you want to make sure that even if it's not a genuine laugh, you want to make sure that you can start to apply some of the techniques you've been practicing in laughter. Um, so learning how to fake laugh is really important because it'll give you like a little microcosm to bring techniques into it and see what happens. Um, and there's some other things there. Laughing is challenging for people because what happens is we have such great pressure and it's, it's very, it's fluctuation in pressure quite a lot. So it can often blow the vocal tract open because it's like, you know, if you close a bottle and then you put air into it, the bottle reinflates. It's kind of like that with your vocal tract, but some other stuff too. So I would recommend fake laughter at first. Um, someone said, um, nerd speak, love it. Oh, you, you already know I'm like microtonal nerd from hell and back. Let's see. Um, I saw you calling yourself once Amelia Ziana H on Patreon. What's Ziana Eros is like my artist name, you know, like for instance, um, Mark Twain is actually Samuel Clemens, right? So it's a, it's my pseudonym. It's my, uh, yeah, it's my moniker, Ziana. My first name is not Ziana. My name is Amelia, but Ziana is a name I go by. Let's see. Hi, Zia, and I would prefer everyone in this space call me Zia as well, uh, just because, you know, it's like my name. Uh, hi, Zia, how do you overcome the psychological blockage of speaking in certain ranges? Because being told to speak a certain way, that's really challenging. It's definitely something to consider. Um, I like to try to really uh, work through that, like uh, allowing myself to create a safe environment and then take baby steps through it. That's probably the easiest, simplest way I could describe it. Yeah, I've got overheads and I've got a kick and a snare mic. That is correct. Um, I don't have any direct tom mics right now on it. I do have direct tom mics, but I tend to, I actually don't really like the direct tom sound unless I'm miking and producing metal. I actually prefer the indirect tom sound where it sounds more like vintage -y, like drum and bassy. You know, I like that a lot. It's so good on my life. Thank, thank you so much for the inspiration you provide us with. I'm very blessed to be able to do that. And thank you so much with the support. I mean, you guys support, like it's crazy what you guys do for, I don't know. It's just an awesome thing to be a part of. And I'm, I'm really blessed and thankful to be a part of it. So um there's that let's see here uh what do you when are you gonna call your dad online again <laughs> you want me to call my dad again oh i know who that is 22 30 33 Shell i know who you are now based on that i know exactly who you are i love that name though too it's good to see you here um thank you so much i'm off for bed robin it was great having you here i watch a video of someone making music of numbers of the pie now that's not that, that's a little trick that's really cool but that's very interpretive right they're not actually using like pi numbers to, to generate the frequency ratios they're using pi numbers to then interpolate as edo steps which is really cool 100 percent, it is sweet but it's a little different than using numbers like this these actually refer to direct frequency relationships so like 22 to 30 literally is oh no way that battery died i think my camera overheated 
Um, whoopsie. Uh, let's see. All right, we're gonna turn my camera off for a second. I'm gonna go turn a fan on too, cause it's hot. One second. Yeah, I know my camera died. Uh, my camera overheated, so I turned on a fan. I'm gonna let it cool off for like two minutes or so. And uh, let me go ahead and put something on screen for you all to, to look at so it's not just, oh, do you all wanna hear a new piece I'm working on? Do you all wanna hear a new piece I've been working on? It's very exciting stuff. Let me know if so, and I can uh, I can hit you with that. Oh, hold on. It's really hot in here. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Let me also open up OBS here. Move this over. Okay, ignore my activate Windows. I will never activate Windows because this was a legal cop. This was a legal copy of Windows, but then I had to update my motherboard, and it it goes based on the motherboard. So I I didn't I actually ended up not getting it. How do you manage to keep a feminine voice while singing? Since singing, you have the challenge of, um. <laughs> Excuse me. Um, yeah, so, uh, it needs some heat sinks. That's a great point. All right, so I'll play, uh, I'll play this song here. All right, this is something I've been working on. This is a spoiler. This will be on my fourth album. Some people on my server have already heard it, but I'm going to show you the most up-to-date version. This piece is called Hex. All right, I'm extremely, extremely proud of this piece. Now, I just want to let you all know, you're going to be hearing this in mono because, uh, OBS is inherently mono or whatever the way I'm sending out audio. So it's gonna be way better when you hear it in stereo. So consider this like a tease, but like you're only getting an, you're getting an incomplete picture, okay? So here we go. Well, I don't have the key because it, it, uh, it was like a long time ago. I'll, I'll, I'll contact him. All right, here we go. This is Hex. It's not done. In fact, I did a lot more work on it last night. transition a little. Okay, I'm gonna fast forward a little. 
Okay, 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 okay. Okay, check, check, check this out. This is crazy stuff. I'm gonna fast forward. It's 10 minutes long. Just intonation. I don't know any other music that exists like this. I literally have never heard anything that sounds like this. So, uh, I would love to listen to- Oh, this is cool. Check this out. I won't spoil anymore. Uh, I do love Kashua Daisuke, one of my biggest influences ever. When I was like, when I was in college, when I was 17 or 18, I was just learning how to compose music. Kashua Daisuke was such a huge influence on me. Same with BT, this binary universe. Those are all my influences, literally. You guys just named Kashua Daisuke, BT, this binary universe, Amon Tobin, I Sam, and his music all are my big influences when I was like a teenager growing up. Also, Telefon Tel Aviv. Someone said something about uh, IDM earlier. I was a huge IDM head. Telefon Tel Aviv was so influential to me. Massive Attack, so influential to me. I'm glad you guys like this. Just so you know, there's some people who are like, this is cool. I like the DMB parts, but the other stuff's weird. It's supposed to be. This isn't supposed to be a, like a song. This is supposed to be like an experience. And conceptually, so my album that I'm working on, my fourth full length album is a concept album about a character named Vis. And this is supposed to be like Vis, like exiled and hexed into this like space of where like, their very like passion like curses them and 
I don't want to spoil all of it, but this is supposed to feel like a nightmare. It's supposed to feel like things are connected, but not really connected. It's like a dream sequence where it's like, you know, you're having a dream and then all of a sudden things are together that shouldn't be together. And then all of a sudden you're in a different space. It's supposed to feel like you're jumping between places and like there's like you're flickering in and out of existence. So like all the times where the vocals hit, that's like this like flickering back into existence and all the time where there's other things it's like this like losing their mind over the experience they're going through. Uh, so it is not supposed to be like, uh, what the heck, what about Ben? That's funny. It's definitely not supposed to be like a, like a traditional song. I've got a lot of those already. You know, this is very much a different thing altogether. And it's been so fun to work on. Uh, in fact, I wrote all 10 minutes of this in about three days. So uh, I wrote this in three days. I, however, I've been, I've been gestating on the idea since November. The idea came to me when I was in a shopping mall in, um, in uh, oh my gosh, Evan, thank you so, or even, even, even has a watermark. Thank you so much. Uh, I, I appreciate that so much. But I would, I would love to see an animated story of the album too. Uh, but basically, like I was uh, in November, I was in a mall in, um, in uh, uh, San Francisco. And I was with, actually, I was with Yvette Young. I'm sure someone here knows her. I was, we were hanging out and we were at a mall together. And I was walking and she said something and it instantly hit my mind, this piece. And I was like, oh my God, I get it. Now this is the next piece for the album. And it took me about eight months of thinking nine eight to nine months of thinking and doing some sound design to kind of build the resources i need to tackle this piece and i finally got the energy i tried starting it like if i were to show you my project file you'll see like six or seven dead hexes that never got off the ground because it just the energy wasn't right and just the other day i started this and instantly it was like boom that what really what really fixed it for me was the uh, yeah from covet uh what really fixed it for me was when i did um when i found uh, tetra I, I, so all this is in just intonation. This is all free pitch, free just intonation. All of that is all, you know, this is all just intonation and it is all free pitch, everything. And, um, so the thing that really changed it for me was when I found out that when you take just intonation tetracot, so this is a septimal tetracot, 28, 31, 34, whatever, Septimal tetracot with a lot of distortion was the sound of hex that I was missing. And the moment I found that, then I was like, boom, the piece, the piece has revealed itself. You can see I still need to mix it a little bit better, right? Because it's like, there's some kicks that stand out, like right here, the kicks aren't mixed really well yet. I still have a bit of mixing to do, but for the most part, the foundation is laid in place. And I have to finish this final transition. It's gonna be awesome. This is gonna connect in such a powerful way. There's gonna be some here, and then. And then it's gonna go back into that main part, but it's gonna be huge, and there's gonna be orchestra, and it's gonna, the synths are popping there, and it's gonna be crazy, and it's gonna hit so hard. Uh, will you work? I've thought about remastering. I thought about remastering Dream Sura for a, a 10 year release, a 10 year thing, because I actually really love Dream Sura. But honestly, at this point, I'd rather just charge ahead with the new stuff I'm doing, you know? Yeah, no, it's. I do want it to feel discordant. I want it to feel like nightmares, like you're drowning. I want it to feel like, you know, you're like forgetting yourself. I want it to feel like a lot of uncomfortable emotions interspersed with like absolute moments of beauty. Because that's kind of the way the story goes, I guess. Um, you, you, oh, see, that really means a lot. Hello, no, I don't want my name on YouTube. Look, I love doing this voice stuff. I, it means a lot to me. But, you know, I've been a composer and a musician all my life. I went to school and studied music composition. Music and sound production is my spirituality. So, yes, I light up when I think about music and making my music because it's my purpose, you know, in this world. Um, my music is, is the the thing I've been building since I was a child and it's the thing I am so I mean the whole reason why I do I you know I even if I had no money or no trans voice lessons or no support or whatever recognition I, I would just be sitting around making music all day long you know and um and I would be very happy and I'm happy now and thankful now but I as long as I can make music I'm happy and uh so yeah it means a lot to me and um yeah so Let's see here. Yes, Yvette Young, uh, what does hex mean in the context of witchcraft? Hex is like a curse. So this song is about being cursed, or this piece. I don't even know if I can call it a song. It's about the experience. So 
if you understand the, so the story of witchcraft my album uh goes kind of like this i'll just loosely summarize it as it's summarized on my witchcraft video um basically there is a witch this who turns herself into sound and can't get back and she's trapped there and in this process she kind of realizes that uh her passion was a curse and that's what this is i mean the lyrics in this part literally say uh hexed by hexing cursed by by passion so it's like this idea of you love something so much and you commit your whole life to it and then you actually lose out on so much because of it like you know i don't have a lot of friends and i don't have really own anyone that i love or anyone I don't know, I just, I'm like incapable of like forming like meaningful social relationships because I spent the last like 16 years of my life doing music like 12 to 16 hours a day. So in some ways I feel like cursed by my passion, but at the same time, it's the most beautiful aspect of my life. And that's really where a lot of the, the energy from this album comes from. There's a lot of other stuff too. I, I don't want to leak all of it without, you know, giving it away, but it's very much this idea of being like trapped in a prison that you made of your own passion. And, um, that's why I, I want the visceral. All my fears are expressed in, this, in the sounds here. The s glass shattering and the w drowning and just all of it is like my biggest fears kind of. But then also the softest, most beautiful, prettiest moments because that's what it is. I don't know. It's, it's a push and pull. So <sighs> it's, it's a lot to talk about. Um, but yeah, so that's part of it. And hex is just the curse. It's, it's the hex there's one other piece i have to finish that i haven't started yet for the album called goddess and that's the last piece on the album and i know exactly what i have to do for it and i've been working on it mentally for a long time but hex was this is the sound design monster i want hex to be the most experimental weirdest thing i've ever made and it's actually not weird enough for my taste yet i'm gonna weirdify this section a little more and weirdify the section last night i was recording acoustic cello so somebody asked during this section they were like what is that sound what was it right here <laughs> Right, right here. That's acoustic cello, that dun 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 dun. And this sound. Acoustic cello. There's acoustic cello elsewhere that sounds insane. If you take acoustic cello and you distort the heck out of it, you can turn it into a synth that sounds more organic and more like vibrant. And I've really been loving it. Hey, Z, I just want to say you inspire me so much. I love your music and your music theory ideas. Oh my gosh, thank you so much. I love your math stuff. I wish I understood that. You've posted stuff on the server, you know, that I find extremely stimulating, but I just don't understand math at that level. So I can't really like interact with it in a meaningful way. So I'm sorry. I would love to communicate more about the things that you were exploring and, and describe it to you better, but I'm just not very mathy, um, you know? Well, thank you, Roos. I appreciate that. My friend did some web dev for bigger companies. What mail can he reach out to you? Uh, have him email um, support at transvoicelessons at gmail.com. No, Tara, you're welcome to ask voice questions. That was what the subject of this video, we were doing ear training at first. We didn't even do much ear training because so many good questions came in and it became more dynamic. See, ear training is kind of a passive active process where it's like, you know, I, I will actively do something here and then you all are passively participate. Well, you're actively participating, but not in a passive or in an active way. So it's kind of hard to do in a one-sided thing. But um, yeah, so uh, I'm, I'm, I'm glad you all like Hex. That's a, I think it's going to be a monster piece. It's, it's just going to be crazy, 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 crazy stuff. So let's do a little bit of ear training, shall we? To stay true to the topic of our, you know, it's going to be up on the YouTube channel as, as what it is, and we barely did ear training. We answered a lot of good questions though, right? That was good. Let's see here, and I'm kind of getting hungry, so I'll stream a little longer. I'll do a little bit of ear training stuff, and then we will uh, eat some food, and then I've got to film YouTube content for my editor to do stuff with, and I've already got everything recording and go, or everything all set up and whatnot, and uh, yeah. I'm gonna do some fun content tonight. I think I'm gonna do, I'll do the Q&A that everybody asked about uh, or everybody submitted questions for on the community page. And then I think I'm gonna do a reacts to and copies someone's voice video. I wanna see how that'll perform on the algorithm. Um, Cause I, I wanna play the algorithm game so that the resources can get spread to as many people uh, as need them. Let's see here, uh, contrasting, let me find, let's go ahead and listen to the difference between vocal weights, okay? Okay, there's that. Oh, we had another one of those weird little glitches where the stream shuts off. 
Am I still here, everyone? Can you all see me? I don't know why it glitches like that. Time to go now. Yes, of course. Thank you. Okay, everyone, let's do some ear training on vocal weight. So we're going to do light sound followed by a heavy sound. Let's just take a listen. Oh, let me turn my mic down so the AC noise isn't as loud, and I'll turn the, the audio up to you guys since it's, uh, okay. All of these are going to have the same resonance and the same pitch behavior. That's the goal, but they'll have different weight. Okay, so light versus heavy. Here's light versus heavy again. That's a great example. Listen to how the weight's just so buzzy and kind of intense-like and whatnot. Wait, how long did vocal recovery take after feminizing your voice? I never had vocal surgery. I don't know. Um, are you talking about FFS? It took me about three weeks or so to, to be good at vocalizing after FFS. Antonio said, okay. So weight equal force and push. I mean, that's one way to think about it. I, I like to think about it more like weight is the perceptual sound of like uh, intensity and buzziness. And it's just like a, like here's a good example. Here's a digital sound. This is lower weight. This is heavier weight. That sound is what you're trying to listen for in vocal weight and try to remove without being breathy. Like that. See? The difference in uh, buzziness. Oh, it's very hard to hear my voice. Okay, sorry about that. I think I turned myself down a little bit too much. Am I better now? Hello, testing. Check, 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 check. Hola. Yeah, sorry. I turned myself down. We're good though now, right? Yeah? Let me just know. I gotta wait till the stream catches up to know. Hola. Okay. So let's see here. Now uh, we'll go ahead and listen to some more of these. Okay, perfect, everybody. So here we go. Light versus heavy. <laughs> hear the buzziness? That's really what you're trying to listen for and wait. That, that kind of tells you what you're what you're looking after. One. 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 Good. Now I'll take another lesson. Here's light versus heavy and a singing passage. Ah, 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 ah. Ah, ah, ah. Yeah, I agree with that, uh, Joanna. I actually love math so much, but I was really dejected by the whole institutionalized math. And so for that reason, I didn't, uh, yeah, it just didn't, it didn't uh, work out very well for me. So, so I'm a bit behind in math, but... I love it. Ba -da -ba -da, ba -ba. Light sound. Ba -ba -da -ba -da. Heavier sound. Ba -ba -da -ba -da. Sharper. See, you know what's amazing, Jessica? You said sharper and brighter, and that's exactly why I've stopped describing resonance as bright and dark. Because people perceptually perceive increases in weight as brighter, and so if people describe resonance as bright and dark, which is like the most conventional way and the way that I did it for a long time, it's just not very good. It, it's not very conducive to a person learning, uh, especially learning how to separate resonance from weight, because uh, even if I'm, oh, 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 people hear that as brighter, because it is brighter, but it's not higher resonance. Let's listen to this one. Oh, oh, oh. Light sound, lower pitches. Oh, oh, oh. Yeah, I just like to say buzzy all the time now. And then here's heavier. Oh, oh, oh. oh that's clipping too. I'm so sorry it's clipping. Let me redo that one. And I, my mic clipped too. Sorry, I'm just trying to balance the audio right, but I don't have, I don't get to hear it for myself, so I don't know the volume. So here we go. Oh, oh, oh. Oh, oh, oh. Okay, so there's heavy versus light, or light versus heavy again. Oh, here we go. What's this one? I don't, this one looks... Heat from fire, fire from heat. Oh, okay. All right. I guess I had to throw one in there for the fans. Heat from fire, fire from heat. And uh, if we then compare it with the the uh, heavier version... Hold on, let me lower this a bit. Heat from fire, fire from heat. No. Heat from fire, fire from heat. How did you learn all this in the absence of proper pedagogy? I used my ears because ears are the ultimate rule. And if you follow your ears, you'll find all kinds of things. It's just like the microtonal world. 
I've found a lot of new theories of microtonality that haven't really been discussed before. And I only found those not by thinking about music theory or by thinking about theorizing, but I found it by using my ear. And then my ear revealed to me truths or observations or perspectives that other people hadn't revealed because they were using their brain instead of their ear. And now we've got new stuff. Very good. Now, uh, here we go. This one looks good. Mm. Oh, thank you so much, Augies. I appreciate that very, very much. Okay, so here we go. Mm. Oh, feels like a bit like slapping a bass softly to a slap. That is exactly the same thing. That's because when you excite a string, it ends up doing this and gets heavier. If I go over to my piano and I play a note very softly, it has a certain softness to it. And if I play it harder, it goes bonk, bonk, bonk. It gets buzzier and snappier. That is exactly true. All physical acoustic instruments reveal this process of spectral roll off or spectral tilt which we could perceive as some some expression of weight basically it's harmonic saturation and what happens is usually in acoustic instruments if they're played softly the harmonic spectra looks more like this you'll see it in a second i think uh let me just double check yeah so the harmonic spectra looks more like this see this little slope here Usually acoustic instruments look more like that when they're like, um, let me move it over here. Okay. Usually acoustic instruments look more like this, but then when you're heavy or you strike it with more energy or it displaces more air or more of the tissue is active, we get this. And this is really what's responsible for our perception of vocal weight. I mean, uh, like the auditory perception of it. We can say it's correlated to this kind of spectral roll off or the, the profile of the harmonic spectra. And so we have a lighter sound, which is more rolled off and a heavier sound, which is less rolled off. And that's going to make it so that you hear this way buzzier because there's more high frequency versus here, the balance of low frequency to high frequency is more tilted and more in favor of the low frequency. This is the sort of uh, actual reason why we hear things buzzier or less buzzy. How fun. Do you have an opinion on vocal feminization surgery? I think you should be very educated in your decision about it. Um, I don't think most people need it but if it's something you want as an individual i support body autonomy so go for it just make sure that you are very well educated about the risks and the rewards of it you know just like i would advise anyone of a surgery i have a professional opinion and a personal opinion on it and i just gave you my personal opinion my professional opinion is probably not so good and it's really not rec recommended unless you're like the 0.01 percent of people who have very very significant vocal mass and it's very challenging for them to normalize less in that case it could be a good option but in general i think it's kind of at least give it an honest effort to try to feminize through behavior first because you can usually get some better you'll usually get better results doing it that way uh, all things considered um dang you got some super iq i don't know about that just uh, i just love sound a lot i'm just a big sound geek uh now if i can learn to make my voice as predictable as bass yes how does it look at the spectrum of saturated sound like the roll up oh i just showed you right i i had it on the screen there um you can actually see it now too yeah i would do voice acting for sure I think I've done one voice acting gig already, but yeah, you know. Well, here's another example of light versus heavy. Happy birthday to you. With dark resonance. Happy birthday. Excuse me, not dark, big. Ah, see, I'm trying to not use that word. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday <laughs> to you. Oh, look at that little. Ooh, ooh, yeah, okay, yeah. So there's light versus heavy, you know, you can all hear the buzziness, right? So that's really what you're trying to look for when it comes to vocal weight. So is buzziness an emotional thing? I mean, it certainly has emotional affect. All sounds have an emotional affect or the capability of like a much uh, a sound with more rich, saturated spectrum is going to sound more intense. And so musically, it's great to bring into those moments like the distortion I was using in the piece hex. That distortion is a lot of the saturated buzziness. And so, it, you know, it combines hello, unique, sexy. Welcome to our little stream here. Okay, let's see. Uh, how about we do a little bit of ear training with, with uh, size? How about that? So we've done some ear training with weight. Let's do... Let's do some ear training with resonance. Okay. Ba, 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 ba. Ba, ba. That is the sound of me maintaining vocal weight and maintaining pitch and simply raising my resonance or making my vocal tracks smaller. 
ba, 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 ba. Thank you, uh, HLR. I've actually been practicing my masculine voice a lot. Do you want to hear something crazy? Check this out. I did a I did an audio sample here. Let me find it. There was one I woke up in the morning and I tried my absolute hardest to make it sound masculine. I think I did a good job. Check it out. Let's see if I can find it. I don't know if I'll be able to find it in all this. Maybe here? Ah. Uh, no, that sounds like a weak, weak sound. Ah. Uh, weak. Ah. Uh, weak, 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 weak. Where's the strong one? I did some some super powerful masculine stuff the other day. Where's it at? Have that buzzy quality, and then I'm observation. I didn't make this, and then I'm gonna. Not there. Um, and then I'm gonna increase the vocal weight back Not to it. Not there. One is what it sounds like. If Not there. Uh, no. Lightness. So the labored. We should experience of on folds. Now let's him. I can't find it. Ah. Uh, it's so frustrating. Oh, I know where I find it. Here we go. Here we go. Here we go. Um, here we go. Low and light, heavy and high. No, I'm looking for low and heavy. Where is it at? I did one the other day, though, that was actually really, really, really heavy. It's the heaviest that I had been in probably several months. Several, maybe years, actually. If I can find it, I'll play it, but I'm having trouble finding it. Um, uh, 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 uh. I'm starting to get warmed up with singing. I told you all once I got warmed up, I'd sing for you all more. I, I'm holding true to my word. Okay, maybe it's here. Heavier voices are often perceived as more ma- Example one, a relatively masculine voice. Um, okay, yeah, so- No, it's too light. Hold on. Very low. Because I'm gonna go ahead and um, I'm gonna add the, the vocal- No, that's the same old weak stuff I always do. I don't know, somewhere along the lines, I did some some really ripping and rocking heavy sounds. I wish I could find it. Maybe this? So here's a- um, No, that's too- Oh, that's like this. Let's see. Uh, can you riff and run? Not really good. I'm not like a soul singer, but I can riff and run if I practice it a little bit or if I have a certain riff in mind that I want to do. Um, did you lose the ability to speak in your previous male voice after voice training? Yeah, I did, actually. It kind of sucks. Um, like right now that I'm warmed up, like I'm literally not joking. This is um, uh, This is literally the most masculine I can sound. Even though I know how to do it, like now I've been talking for about an hour and a half and I'm warmed up, like... I just lose it. I don't know. So it's actually very frustrating um, because I want to be able to do it all. But for some reason, once I get super warmed up in the feminized direction, it's just that the masculine stuff's gone. Even in the morning, my masculine voice isn't that good. I saw someone else the other day say, oh, I think it's just because Z behaviorally avoids it. No, I'm not behaviorally avoiding sounding masculine. I've literally been practicing my masculine voice every day for the last like year. You know what I mean? There's no... I have zero ounce of behavioral avoidance in my voice whatsoever now. I desperately want to do a masculine voice again, and I just am having trouble doing it. So if, if anyone ever says, you know, like, I can't do it because I'm behaviorally avoiding it, no, I want to do it. When I was recording the audios for my book voice, or when I was recording the audios for my book, it was extremely frustrating because I needed to demonstrate an example where I was really heavy to help my trans-masculine speakers. I couldn't do it very well, so I had to wait till I woke up one morning, and even then it, it wasn't satisfactory. So... You know, it's like, I don't know why it happened. I don't know. It's happened to other people I've worked with, too. It doesn't always happen to people, but it, I don't know. It's very frustrating, though. Alive. That's one of my warm-ups. Sola, if you guys have heard Sola, my piece. Uh, I love singing that to warm up. That line is just so perfect in my range, and it, it just really lets me lean in. Would you say the blues had any impact? No, actually, not at all. I actually have always hated the blues. I love the blues now, but when I was a, a youngster and coming up in college, I hated the blues. I would go to jazz gigs and people would play. People would be like, "All right, let's do blues," and, and I just wouldn't really play. I just thought it was boring. I was such an elitist back then. I'm not an elitist anymore. I think it's awesome, but blues has not influenced me in any way, shape, or form, other than the fact that the blues created rock music in the history, and rock music, you know, ultimately gave way to metal, and metal is where I got into music, so in a way, I'm um, inherently influenced by the blues culture, because it gave birth to the thing that ultimately influenced me, but blues itself, no, I'm not really influenced by it, because I never really listened to it. Uh, I do like Elaine Elias, if you've heard her, though. She's a blues, jazz pianist. I really like her stuff. Uh, 
little bit hard to connect. Ah! I don't want to be too loud though. Any tips for beginners? You should watch my beginner video I just released last week. Uh, I just put it out and it's definitely by far the best thing I've ever made for beginners. So that would be the only thing I'd recommend that you start with on my channel. And then from there you can move on to other stuff. I'm intentionally keeping my mask voice and it's definitely slowing down my progress for feminization, but it's so fun. Yeah, that seems to be the case. It seems like if you want to keep both, it does slow you down a little, but um, I don't think it has to necessarily. It just seems to do that often. I'm gender fluid. Is it possible to keep? Yes, it's, ke it's possible to keep both. You'll need to nurture both. Um, let's see here. Saw this bicycle that Contra steered. Took long going back. Yeah, yeah totally. Um, I would love to keep the full range as well. Uh, that's a great idea to get a singing coach to help you with your speaking sing, speaking training as well. Um, uh, raised my voice from baritone to alto doing fem voice, and months later now I'm a soprano. There you go. Get it. Uh, those terms to me are mostly meaningless, but I think that's awesome that you can sing that repertoire without getting caught up or stuck. By the way, you look fabulous. Thank you very much. I really appreciate that. Um, you know, always a struggle with the body image stuff, but doing all right with it mostly. How long do people need to voice train before they can learn to sing in a female voice? I don't think it's so linear, right? I don't think it's like you hit like 10 hours or 50 hours and all of a sudden you sing in a femme voice. I think it's just about practice and experimentation. Um, and some people can do it really fast. I mean, if you have a speaking voice right now that's feminine or whatever and you've already changed it a bit, the best place to start is just learning how to do happy birthday, you know? Happy, doing a speech-like way. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you, and try to keep it together, you know, or anything. Do, re, mi, fa, so, oh, 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 my voice is actually feeling really good right now. So, oh, 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 you want to get rid of your mask voice, mask voice forever? Yeah, same. I did it originally, but then I didn't, and then it's frustrating. So, God, I go, love you all. Thank you all. It was so awesome having you all here. Please explain micro exercises during the whole day. Do you mean like small practicing throughout the day or do you mean like micro tonal exercises or micro variable vocal exercises? Because there's kind of a multiple ways that that can go. Um, Got to go. Will this be a VOD for later? It definitely will be a VOD for later. I'm probably going to be ending the stream soonish just because I want to make sure I can film YouTube content before it gets too late. And it's coming up on 7.38. We're, how many hours have we been streaming now? About two. Yeah, we just came up on two. So I'll probably end it soonish. Uh, I'll maybe stick around for a little bit longer. Any tips if you have zero vocal range? I feel like I can't go more than five. Yeah. So if you feel like you have no vocal range, it means that you need to practice modification of weight more. Your vocal range is probably getting blocked by the amount of weight that you have or you're closing your vocal folds off or choking things, whatever. You know, something is happening along the way that's stopping you from being able to reach those pitches. So it shouldn't just be about trying to get your voice to go to the right pitch area. It should be about how can you even open those spaces. And by just opening those spaces, you're actually moving towards vocal progress by itself. Mm -hmm. Well, knowing how to push air is important, but even more important than that, in my opinion, is knowing how to hold back air. Because like I said before, airflow is a bit of a misnomer in voice. It's not just about push air, push air, push air. It's about push air and block air. And if you push too much air, but you don't block air, then you're breathy. And if you block too much, but you don't push enough, then you're closed. So purity of sound is all about the balance between pushing and blocking. And we want you to both push and block in equilibrium. And that will ah, ah, give you pure sounds instead of ah, I'm pushing too much or ah, I'm squeezing too much. It's a counterbalance of forces. And one of them is the closing force and one of them is the pushing force. And whichever, uh, you know, as you play around with that, yeah. So I definitely see how it's a fluid thing and not just, yes, good, good that you see it that way. I think it's very toxic if we just think about it as male or female voice because really those terms don't mean anything, right? Is it okay to speak in a more soft, whispery-like and then learn to... I mean, that's okay, Jessica, but honestly, like, you can get into a lot of mistakes if you're speaking really quietly. So I would actually prefer you learn the control that you're looking for at, at, at like, medium, louder volumes than learning them at quiet volumes um, because it, it kind of changes things a lot. Being quiet really kind of breaks the game a little bit, and uh, it, can, it can trick you. And so I would, I would caution you on that. Okay, everyone. Well, 
time for me to wrap up. I'm going to go right into filming two YouTube videos. Um, it's honestly so, I'm so blessed and so thankful to have so many people here and so many amazing questions and so much stuff covered and huge thanks to everyone who did with super chats. I didn't even know what that was until I randomly turned it on the other day, but like, I, I cannot believe the support that everyone has given. So thank you all so much. It really means so, so, so much. Um, Ruth, thank you so much for that. Um, everyone, I can't remember every single name that donated off the top of my head. Deeker, uh, Joanna, thank you so much. Uh, um, even has a watermark. Thank you so much. I want to make sure I thank everybody for, for their donations today. I, those are the only people I can scroll back and see, but I know there were more people there that didn't get named. And so thank you all so much for that support. It really means a lot. Um, and uh, yeah, okay, wait, we got one more question. Just Maddie the Baddie's got a question. Go ahead. Yeah, 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 yeah. Hit me with that question, Baddie. You bad bitch. Go ahead and hit me with that question. Ooh, 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 ooh. We got one more question. Go ahead, Maddie. I like that name. Maddie the Baddie. Ah, ah, per, per. Um, weather, tether, nether, fort, fire. Fortnite is a very skilled game that it takes a lot of, like, skill and, like, talent to, like, be a Fortnite pro gamer. Does anybody else here love Fortnite? Fork knife? No, not really. Um, I like melee, but I like to make fun of fork knife. Ah, 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 ah. Oh, and Alyssa, of course. How could I forget the first? Thank you for opening that wave. I think that's mind blowing. Ah, um, uh, so like my favorite game is like going and like playing like different like video game stuff i really like video games a lot and they're like my favorite things uh which it which is easier to, to learn um <laughs> monotone female voice um uh, if we do last year training one then oh sure sure i can do that too before i go addy i um which is easier to learn a monotone female voice or a high-pitched female voice uh, they're kind of, the, it kind of doesn't really change it that much. I mean, I don't think you need to be high pitched, like, but you probably want to be higher. Um, it, what'll happen is if, if you sufficiently reduce and normalize having less vocal weight, which you can learn about in my newest video. Um, if you, if you get that sufficiently, your voice should mostly stay up in pitch and it should be fine. Um, so I would say it's, I would say maybe it's easiest to learn monotone, but you don't really need to do that. It seems like that question is kind of it's kind of asking something that's not exactly like super uh, relevant to what you're wanting. Uh, let's see here. Uh, clear versus breathy versus light. Ah, uh, one, two, three, purr. Um, I love sounding like a Disney princess. Ah, uh, ah, uh, ah, uh, ah, uh, um, uh, okay, wait, um, oh, okay, um, I wonder how, uh, hi, okay, you guys have never heard me do this voice, but I don't think, um, okay, now I just need to, like, relax my lips a little bit, and, um, okay, so, here's something you guys have probably never heard me do, um, and do, I even changed my dialectic behavior, okay, so, what we're gonna do here is we, uh, so what we're gonna do here is we are going to, uh, we're gonna go ahead here and, and check a little bit on purity, so we're gonna make a, a really pure sound, and, uh, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna play a sound here where it's a light sound, but then we're gonna go from a breathy to clear. So our goal, one of the biggest misconceptions that people do when they're changing, uh, one of the biggest misconceptions that people do when they're changing the weight of their voice is they accidentally get a little bit too breathy. And uh, what we really want is a clear sound, like ah, ah, instead of ah, ah. So I'm gonna go ahead here and just demonstrate some differences here. And all of these are light voices, so not a lot of vocal weight anyways. Um, and then here, ah, ah, it's pretty light. Actually, I can just do it better right now. I'm more warmed up now than I was when I made these audio files. So how about I just do it? So here we go. Ah, <clears throat> ah, 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 ah. So we've got some different levels of purity. Sorry there's so much background noise. I had to turn on a fan because my camera overheated. Ah, ah. Here's clear. Ah, ah. Here's breathy. Ah, ah. Here's squeezed. Ah, ah, ah. Where it starts to get too close. Now I'll do all of these with constriction and without constriction. Ah, 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 ah. Now I'll do breathy. Ah, 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 ah. And now I'll do creaky. Ah, 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 ah. Just playing with different degrees of purity. 
So to speak with more air, try to. Uh, no, I wouldn't say speak forward in the mouth to avoid weight. Uh, I don't. I don't really think of it like that. Um, I just try to uh, reduce the amount of buzziness and intensity. I like to think about it like how it makes my pitches feel, and that lets me know what I'm, I'm doing. Uh, let's see here. You know, Addy, I just realized it's kind of hard to demonstrate different degrees of purity with a fan going on in the background. So I think I think what I should do is have a proper ear training stream because this one felt improper. So I'm probably going to change the title of the stream to more like casual voice. I don't know. But how about this? How about we schedule um, a voice ear training, a legit ear training session on YouTube here and uh, everyone can uh, gather then and then we can we can really do it. I'll have, I won't have a fan going um, and we'll go over all the sounds that everyone needs to discriminate because at this point now we've got auditory discrimination two hours in and then the first hour and then the middle was not that and so uh, I think we'll end the ear training there for now and we'll pick it up in a more organized way to make it a more concrete and useful resource for people to access more easily. Um, okay, so uh, anyways, I think it is now time. But when? It's a good question. I'll announce it on my Patreon and I'll announce it on my community page. Once again, one last plug. You know, you guys have supported me a crazy time with the Super Chat stuff. But one more plug. If you would like to contribute to the creation of, of free trans voice material for learning for the trans community, feel free to join our Patreon. We have a very vibrant Discord community here. As you can see, let me hide everyone's names since you don't, so you cannot see how many messages I'm behind on. There's thousands. Okay, let's see here. So here is our community, as you can see. Uh, there's different stuff, people introducing and whatnot. We've got little chatter areas. We've got voice space stuff. We've got general topics. Some music theory if you're interested in just intonation. This is where the just intonation occurs. Other stuff. And a lot of people don't know this either. But look at all these secret channels that nobody actually knows exists. Isn't this crazy? We've got all kinds of stuff that people will never know about. Okay. Good. Well, uh, there's a Trans Voice Lessons Patreon. If you would like to join it, feel free. It helps me create more free resources. Uh, it's on Patreon. It's a connected perk. I think I'm going to change that eventually, but not till I get auto booking set up. So it's a Patreon perk right now. Um, so, yep. Uh, let's see. Going to go eat some food. Then I'm going to suffer. Or I suffer from a lot of anxiety internal So this is hard for me to get motivation. Definitely hard to do that. Um, motivation is a... Think of it this way. We kind of don't want you to rely on motivation because motivation is very fickle. You know, Lisa and I were talking about this recently. Um, motivation's fickle. So you've just got to really try to... How is Ziana E. Rose pronounced? Ziana E. Rose. I'm new to this, trying to find a way which will sound most natural. Well, I'm really glad to be able to help you, Maddie. Um, well, let's see here. Uh, do, 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 do. How do you get motivation for voice feminization therapy? I mean, for me, it came from dysphoria. Like, it was either that or not a good outcome of life, you know? So I kind of felt like I had to. And honestly, I lost motivation and really struggled and almost gave up at one point. Um, but yeah, I, I didn't. And um, I'm glad I didn't because now I have this crazy, crazy stuff. Well, anyways, I'm going to hop off here, eat some food. Thank you all so much for the support. Thank you all so much for being here. This is an absolutely crazy stream. The most, it was the most, this is the most viewers we've ever had in one stream. The most views we've ever had in one stream. The first time we ever had super chat and that's huge support coming through from everybody. So thank you all so much. I would love to stream more. And my goal is to put out more frequent content. My goal is to try to put out a YouTube video every week. Um, and then a big, big, big learning video, maybe once a month. Um, and I would love to stream more as well. So if you guys all like this, don't forget to like and subscribe and um, hit that ring bell follow, but whatever the YouTuber stuff is, you know what I mean? Anyways, but it was great chatting with you all. Take care, be safe. Okay. Thanks everyone so much for being here. Goodbye everyone.